All right. Hello, folks. Welcome to another episode of Pairing with James Shore. Hi, everyone. Happy to be here. Happy to be doing more work on databases and uh, design, API yeah. design. We've been having a lot of good discussions about API design. Yeah, yeah. Recently. Hey, Astrid, good to see you again. Hi, Astrid. Um, so I have a little uh, program announcement for folks, uh, which is that I've got my training course coming up on April 11th. Um, and, uh, for those of you watching the recording, that means that you've got just one week left to sign up, uh, for people watching the live stream, you've got two weeks left, but, um, what that means is that next week I expect to be panicking just a little bit saying I've got to finish all the content. Like I've been working on it and it's coming along really well, but I'm just looking at the amount of time it's going to take me. And I'm going to want next Monday to work on that. So uh, we will not be streaming next Monday. Uh, not not I as a pair. Probably what I'll do is I'll probably stream during this slot, but it won't be a, a pair. So Okay, um, good to know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I won't be there. Yeah. Uh, and there won't be a recording next week right. uh, for those of you who watch the recording. So it will go up this Friday per normal, and then next Friday there won't be one. Um, and then the following Monday, so two weeks from now, whenever you're seeing this, um, that is the day right before my course. I think everything will be done if I'm a good little elf and do all my work. Uh, so we probably will be streaming, but there is a chance that I won't be able to come to that one either. But just want to let you know and uh, also remind you, if you want to sign up, now is the time because uh, it, it is going to be happening soon. Mm -hmm. yep. uh, yeah, so I'll probably just stream just to, just to keep people tuning in um, but i'll be doing some some other stuff i've got some uh i'm doing a uh, so I, I i have this self-paced course um uh, refractory and tax alcohol architecture right, right. and uh every week i do office hours but also um, once a month i replace that with sort of a deep dive excursion and so the next one is about validation and it's really oh, yeah. interesting because we've had some discussions also about validation so mm -hmm. i'll be um so showing some of the, the 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 bits and bobs from from that, uh, and I think uh, one of the things that I'm I'm really trying to do is just create lots and lots and lots of examples, and so I'll probably be doing that that on stream next time. Excellent, yeah, yeah. I I heard a little bit about your last um, your last uh, mob mobbing session uh, that you did. Sounds like you were running into some some kind of some of the similar stuff that we've been running to here on it was, stream. It was actually kind of funny. It was like, oh, man. Uh, so yeah, so we had um, uh, this this is this is the ensemble that's been going on now for for three years. Uh, wow. we, uh, that that's was a long. That's a lot uh, of time. Yeah, 90, 94 uh, ensembles. And so um, it's just been loads of fun. I, I learn a lot just just as much as the other folks. And and we got to the point where it's a blackjack game because because I love I love the I mean the games as as sort of these projects because there's always there's always edge cases and nuances that are mm -hmm. just so like you can really kind of kind of dig into it. Um, and we were implementing betting, and then there was a prerequisite of you can't deal the cards until the bets have been placed. Now all the code that has been written over these three years didn't have that prerequisite and then all of a sudden vetting. because yeah. didn't have any vetting and so it wasn't a problem um and then we added it and so creating a game and doing the initial deal was not allowed because uh, it'll blow wow. up and saying you haven't placed your bets yet uh and so that happens right i mean we you know you, new prerequisites new preconditions for things come into play uh but because we hadn't, and you know, one of the things about it being a learning ensemble as opposed to a work ensemble is that we kind of get to say, you know what, let's not do that. That's kind of tedious. That's not going to show us much. Just like a little bit of mm -hmm. like what we do here on stream. But yeah. like in the yeah. real world is like, we would have refactored that a while ago, but even in now, sort of- Now you're feeling the pain. Now we're feeling the pain. And so now we, 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 we made that one change to put in the prerequisite to throw an exception and it basically blew up 70 tests. And so now we've got to yeah. go, go, and, go and do that. And what's interesting is like, I'm always looking for, okay, can we change all of it? Like, can I do a refactoring to, to change all of it? If not, can I do some, so IntelliJ IDEA has a, has a very advanced search and replace what's called structural search and replace where you can do things 
that involve thing looking for stuff mm. that is not just text but is actually of a certain type like find me an assignment of this to this where it does this uh and you can you can do somewhat safer replacement so we'll, we're, we'll be experimenting with that that's cool hey suiji um by the way ted i don't know if anybody else is here this but you seem to have some bra background music that's coming through when you talk uh, in your, uh they're sort of a chimey sound uh it shouldn't be music it might be the the gardeners are, are using their very loud blowers oh no it sounds like it sounds like chords actually to me maybe maybe zoom is giving us some <laughs> some background music maybe <laughs> It's only when you talk, so it's this, the the noise suppression is is cutting out most of it. But maybe maybe what is happening is I'm just hearing harmonics from the noise yeah, blower. Yeah, yeah. It, it could be it's trying to suppress blower. that, and and they were literally just outside my door like a few minutes ago. Yeah, um, I think that's what it was. Yeah. Esther asks about validation of people. No, no, we don't. All people are valid. <laughs> <laughs> so um, in. In our code base, in the yacht code base, and I agree with you about games, is they're interesting because they do have actually substantial business logic. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, they lead to these sort of interesting state machine problems yes. that yes. you're that you're talking about. Exactly. And it sort of gets to this design question of, well, how can we, you know, I think there's this real uh, push and pull force happening where we want our code to be well encapsulated. We want to only change the state through documented methods right but if you take that too far and and also you know my object purism heart says that you should you should not have the the people calling it shouldn't actually be aware of the state machine they should just you know do the things right um but if you take that too far now your state is so hidden that to get to the state that you want to test, you have to go through all these things. Right, and that's right. really brittle. And that's the exact yes, problem you encountered. Exactly, yes. It's the exact problem we're encountering with Yacht. Yeah. Um, to a much less degree. I think right. it sounds like sounds like the uh, the blackjack problem was a bit worse. But this is this is also a sociable protest problem. Like mm -hmm. I love sociable tests because mm -hmm. they test the whole thing for real. But now when you change behavior, um, you could end up with having all your tests break. I don't know if I've ever talked to you, Ted, about the um, a collaborator collaborator based isolation pattern that I use. Have I told you about that? Uh, tell me more, and I'll tell you if you've told me. <laughs> it's uh, the the <laughs> the name does not tend to stick in people's brains. Uh, Suiji mm -hmm. mentioned last time I brought this up. I think it was Suiji in the chat said um, that that they could never remember what that was. But the idea is that you have a sociable test, and in your assertion. In your test, you say, you say, you run the method, uh, you run a method and say, this is the response I'm getting back to a method. And then you call the real thing and you compare that mm. the method you ran equals the right. function's return value. Right. Um, so a good example of this is in one of my examples, I'm rendering, uh, rendering a web page. And on a particular, when I test the controller, I say, uh, I am assert that the output of the controller is the same as the output of running this view rendering mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, method. So I don't actually compare to a specific output. I just compare to the output of another function. Right. And that's one way of resolving this is having this collaborator based isolation is basically not saying I expect this value, but instead I expect this function's return value uh, to come back mm -hmm. and then they'll, yeah. be, they'll be the same. Yeah. Wouldn't really help in your situation because yeah. you were putting in a, a a prerequisite sort of a um we were changing the state machine now you're yeah, not you're allowed changing, to changing. enter this state without being only coming from this prior state and and again yeah, you it was were one changing of, yeah go ahead again it was one of those um how you know and this is the, what was interesting is is you can solve it a, a number of ways um so there's there are basically sort of two issues one is the fact that we didn't refactor our tests had we refactored our tests to have a single factory method that said create a game and initial deal or create a game with cards dealt, right? Um, then we would have had to change in one place, would have been done and, and moved on. So that and was that's kind of the most obvious. Style, right. Like, like that's that's something that a lot of people do, yeah. but really is kind of a basic. You should have helpers that build builders that do stuff for you. Right. And, and the other is, is how do you, you know, how do you get. You know, and this came up uh, when, when we're talking about this in your Discord. It's like, how do you get, how do you drive the thing to the to the starting point? Mm -hmm. um, and 
snapshot with with the snapshots it's, it's trivial because you just say here's here's the data just start from start from here and uh and that i think i i didn't sort of realize i hadn't thought about that as a solution until like i literally encountered it and we've been doing a bunch of stuff with snapshots it's like oh of mm -hmm. course yeah you know that i think so the the question of do we have a builder is is sort of a basic one and like you said you would have done it except except it's tedious yeah, right yeah um so your excuse was we're on we're, you know we're we're doing a fairly limited time training thing and that right. makes a lot of sense but i see people come up with all kinds of excuses in the real world that yes. for the same the same thing and we're not yeah. going to do it yeah and yeah. it hurts a lot more in the real world yeah. than it does in a training environment yes. because you at least can say okay well next next time i'll have like done that right and, right and it will and then we'll continue yeah. yeah um but the design question i think is really interesting because there are a whole bunch of different designs mm -hmm. that you can do there I'm not sure that snapshots are the right way, actually. Yeah, it, it makes me uncomfortable because, and and Suiji mentions in, in chat about coupling the the, the the test of the snapshot feels, yeah, feels yeah, like well, too much it also, cheating. It just, it's, it's cheating. Yeah, it's sort of a backdoor into the internals. The snapshot is basically a, uh, an encapsulated version of the private data of the class, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And that... That seems to be missing the point of private data, right? Now, at the same time, we want to set it. Um, I mentioned this in the Discord that I think that using immutable objects results in some interesting mm -hmm. things. And I, I shared the example of my Let's Code or Let's Play TDD series, right. which was in Java years and years ago, where um, where I I ran into sort of a similar state statefulness problem, and I had to do a lot of setup. And what I ended up doing was I changed the what was called in a savings account at the time from a mutable savings account that sort of maintained a running balance to a savings account year that was immutable. So you could say year dot next year and it would do the calculations of interest and so right. forth and give right. you a new year. Right. And that completely solved the problem because now I could take I could make a year in any state I wanted. Right. And then say next year and do the calculations or say this and see the tax calculations happening. Um, so I think state machines as rather than as a black box where you have something that encapsulates the state machine, what you could do is basically have each state be an immutable object yes. that represents the state. Yeah. And in, and in fact, I've, I've talked about this a bunch on my stream because uh, one of the things that because this issue has come up before, not quite in, in that specific way, but it, but in the way of of like it it isn't even just like it's the enforcement of that of that state machine. You end up throwing exceptions, right? If you're trying to, to transition to this state, but you're not in the right in the correct from state, I'm throwing an exception. And then I'm doing that in like six different methods. And yeah. and it's like that that's that's a code smell of its own in that like how about we just not let you do it at all like you cannot do initial deal because you haven't haven't placed bets yet that isn't even an option that's not even on the interface of the, th the object that you have yeah. uh and so um where that gets tricky at least in, in java is you've got to have these concrete types uh yeah. and so how to how do you do that and so f combining that with um the service layer in a repository that can say well uh the service says hey you know uh, you know, do an initial deal, it's going to try and retrieve it and say, it's, it's, you're not in that state. So it won't even try to do that. It'll, it, it just will say, you, you can't even do it. Um, so there's a bunch of experimenting that I'll be doing to see how does that actually look? And is that, yeah. is that feasible? Um, cause otherwise I, you I, end up with, with like the state pattern, in which case you're just throwing exceptions for stuff that you can't do. And yeah, that, that uh, runtime. So it yeah. makes it easier to, to get into the state. Cause you can say like, okay, this is your, this is your state. Um, but it, yeah, it's, it's, it's not great. And, and the other thing is, is I'm, I am highly skeptical of designy solutions. Like if, if fundamentally we have a simple thing, um, and blackjack is not actually that complicated. If fundamentally we have a simple thing, if we're building, you know, a dozen classes to support that simple thing and making it hard to find the logic that, that makes me sort of raise an eyebrow, um, and I'm sort of you sort of see me doing the same kind of eyebrow raising with the yacht 
stuff. Um, I, I, I do want to sort of come back to say, well, look, if I, if I went back to the good old days when I programmed in basic and I was 15 years old and I programmed it there and it would take me less than a hundred lines of code to program the logic, not all the interface and stuff like that. You know, if that's what I, sort of how I imagine the problem, like what's the simple dumb solution? If we just think about this as if statements and loops and so forth, how many lines of code would that be? If the answer is not very much, then I, then I start to say, well, how much of this design that we're doing is actually incidental complexity? Mm -hmm. How much are we making our lives more difficult by adding a lot of design? And that I think is another sort of push pull trade off, right? Is um, because I think, oh, well, state, uh, you know, using state, a class for each state, that that's super clean. But now where's the logic? It's sort right, of smeared right. all over. Right. You can't find it. And yeah. you got all this stuff and it yeah. looks beautiful. But is it actually better than, yeah. you know, the hundred lines of code that you had written in basic yeah. back when you were 15? Yeah. Um, yeah, what's interesting really is, is is this yeah. this uh, so on Twitter I, today I was talking about sort of TDD and and like it doesn't force you to good design. All it does is is perhaps give you feedback and make you aware of things, but you still have to know what to look for. You still have to know what what's good and what's bad, and you still have to have a design sense. Um, and yeah. and it's it's the same kind of thing here. Like I I could write the you know very straightforward code that's not a lot that's not a lot of code that is you know one big switch statement but doesn't but you know that's not that's not testable so what's interesting is you could write sort of nicely structured code that's compact and concise but it may not be testable or may not be easily testable and so there there's that tension there that you know all of what i've been thinking about is how do i make it so that i can test it without feeling like i'm cheating too much well so that's that's a that's a thing for me because my goal is not to write tests. Uh, the tests are sort of a necessary evil. So if, I mean, I do test driven, I love test driven development. I don't love tests. I love test driven development though. Um, for exactly the reason you're stating, um, when people talk about test driven development, it kind of drives me crazy. The people who criticize it saying, well, test driven development doesn't force good design. It's like, no, of course it of course doesn't. Not. Nothing forces Nothing good forces. design, you moron. Um, <laughs> The only thing that causes good design is practice and thinking about it. And even then, and even what's then. good today is not necessarily what's good tomorrow. There yeah. is no magical, this creates good design. Right. Idiot. Uh, sorry, I've, I've had these conversations <laughs> too many times. Uh, so I'm venting because I don't actually like calling people idiot when I'm actually talking to them. So I'm just going to call the general idiots idiots now. We know um, who you're talking about, yeah. What would you say? We know who you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, so, but you're right that TDD, what it does is it allow it, it does create, if you do it properly, it creates these really small steps. And if you do it with pairing, where there's a lot of time for thinking about design and it, that doesn't force good design, but it allows you, if you choose to use that opportunity to create the best design you're capable of, right? which may or may not be good design, yeah, you know? Yeah. Um, but so I love TDD. I don't love tests. And as soon as I feel like making something testable is creating worse quality code, I get really ticked off, you know? Um, and that's when I start, you know, saying, well, how can I do this differently? There's got to be a better way of doing this. Um, so I, I find that like to be a really strong indication design smells. Mm -hmm. This isn't testable in a clean, I can't keep this code clean and make it testable. I need to start being more creative about yeah. how I'm writing the code yeah. without turning it into, you know, 20 classes and right. an EJB. Right. <laughs> hey, Dota Attitude, didn't you resubscribe? Has it been another month already? Well, thanks. It's almost April. Oh my God. I, I'm not thrilled go. about this. I got to pay taxes in April, if nothing else. Uh, we're, we're lucky in California because I'm in a, technically in a disaster zone, so we get until October because of all the storms <laughs> we had. Uh, Dota. Uh, thanks for uh, thanks for saying that. ChatGPT thinks I'm a influential TDD. -er. I don't know how it got that, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> um, 
X proof asked a little back in the chat. I don't know if you saw it, Ted. I was uh, just for large to. projects where you have hundreds of classes, how do you know what class does what? I think that's a really interesting question. Mm. I think it comes down to what design is all about. Yeah. yeah. Um, how would you answer that, Ted? To me, it's it's abstractions at multiple layers, and and uh, I always I always say like, okay, you know, there's thousands of classes. What do I do? It's like, well, what are you trying to do? I mean, yes, if you're maybe trying to say, let's just look at the code to me that makes no sense because because there has to be some goal like why am i looking at the code what am i what am i trying to do am i trying to understand that there's a bug i'm i'm new to the system and i'm trying to understand where it is okay well then i have to say where does it start and then and then can i follow the follow that chain is there a test that tests from that starting point can i start there um but otherwise the abstraction is, is is the way we organize things. Yes, if there's a hundred classes and they're all in one package and some of them are are have terms from the domain and some have technical, that's just that's just messy. Uh and and that just needs to, to have more co like cohesion works at multiple levels, right? Do these things fit together? Do these things work with each other? Uh and those those become abstraction boundaries that we give those names. And so um, I mean, I've worked on on code bases that have multiple millions of lines of code, and it was fine. It wasn't a, wasn't wasn't a problem because we had very clear boundaries and responsibilities for for different parts of the system. Um, so that's sort of my off the cuff. I, I have a I have another way of answering that. I I don't disagree with anything you've just said. And actually, I think the larger the code base. So um, one of the things I've sort of commented on is how A-frame architecture is non-prescriptive and how hexagonal is more prescriptive. And you've actually talked about liking liking having it be yeah. very prescriptive. Yeah. This goes here, this goes here. Well, one of the things I want to call out is that the more people you have and the larger the code base and the larger the, sh larger the shared work on that code base, the more important it is to have prescriptive approaches. Yeah. And... Um, the more valuable, the more value you get out of doing objectively, well, nothing's objective with design, but, you know, subjectively worse design in the small so that the large is comprehensible. Mm -hmm. um, so I think, you know, that instinct you have, it also works really well in training of saying, this is the rule. You will always do this. You need that in large code bases where you've got lots of people. And that's part of how X proof. That's part of how you know what things are, is because there are these patterns that have been established. Right. Um, my definition of good design is that good design is easy to understand and change. And what that means is that di design is very contextual, mm -hmm. like or the quality of design is very contextual. It not only depends on what you are what it was built to do, but also what you are trying to change it. Mm -hmm. And even more than that, who is trying to make that change? Right. So something that's well-designed for one audience is not necessarily well-designed for another audience. Yes. And the, the biggest example of this is somebody using, say, Erlang. Right. Um, they might have beautifully designed Erlang code, but if a Java programmer comes in that, who's never seen Erlang, it's going to be bad design for them. Right. right. And that doesn't mean it's bad design. It just means they cannot change it easily right um so and we see these t types of things happen as language and uh, language ecosystems change over time we're like right. oh you're using streams oh i don't know streams i don't know lambdas no no that's mm -hmm. not uh, we're going to use just loops it's like yeah. okay yes that if we're working on sort of code that you know is java 7 and we can't upgrade it for, for whatever reason then then yes that's the context that's that's the culture of of that code base but um the we've we don't do it that way we've never done it before that kind of thing gets yeah. gets in the way of 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 progress but yeah there, there there's a culture of of the code base and yeah and it's, and it, and it's that tension of we want to make it better but how far can you go before people start resisting oh that's different i don't we don't like that because we're not comfortable with it it, it, it is a real tension it's yeah. it's something you have to think about i yeah. i firmly believe that somebody who's using the the most bleeding edge features is actually committing bad design. Yeah. Um, if they are, you know, off in the weeds relative to what the typical hire for the company is going to be able to handle with mm -hmm. a little bit of training, right. um, 
well, you know, some I, I expect when you hire somebody new, they have to acclimatize. Yeah. You know, the default reaction of a new programmer to a new code base is, ah, that's terrible. Right, right. <laughs> you know, that's a personal problem. But once, you know, there there is a certain amount of this is the way we do things here, and we're going to ratchet that forward, but you don't want to be on the very, very bleeding edge. Yeah. At the same time, you know, it took me a while to get used to higher order functions, but now that I am, mm-hmm. I have trouble imagining writing code without them because they're so useful. Right. Um, and then there are other things as well. I was laughing because Suiji said, hey, Ted, your, your code's not using getters and setters. I don't understand that. It's like, <laughs> yeah. hey, you know what? Get over it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, there is a certain element of the reader's got to be flexible. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I've met enough programmers who are inflexible to know that that's their problem. It's not a design problem. If you can't, you can't flex and adjust because, you know, well, to use an extreme example, oh, you're using an IDE. I really like Emacs. Right. <laughs> you know, I can't work in this. I only work in Emacs or vice versa. Um, that's a real problem. And don't, don't hire that kind of person. Yeah. Um, anyway, we've, we've spent the first half hour ranting and uh, as we should, <laughs> Would you say as we should, <laughs> as we should, as as is tradition, as is tradition. Uh, I, I enjoy these conversations. I hope yeah. the folks watching uh, do I as well. So. Hey, Charlie, glad to see you can make it. Yeah, stop. Um, yeah, I mean, I I, I worked in um, when I was at this large insurance software company. I worked in in our quote labs division, which was basically me and this other guy. Um, and looking back, I think that was a mistake, but that's a separate discussion. But one of the things that, that our, our job was to do was to investigate this fancy new thing, although it wasn't new anymore, um, but it just become, started becoming more popular, this thing called Spring Boot. Um, and uh, actually, I think it was pre-Spring Boot. It was around Spring Framework 3.5. Anyway, we were looking at it because we were looking at um, some ways to, to, to write some completely separate tools that would integrate with, with our stuff. And... and that kind of sort of allowing for that kind of experimentation of 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 saying okay you you can sort of go play with this and then sort of come back and and then we can discuss sort of how does that that fit into the to the rest of the things i think is really uh important because you really like you have to acclimatize to anything like and even if it's something new you, you know it can take you like a month or two of working with it as, as we know look working with anything to say you know, does this feel comfortable yet? Or is this still awkward? Is this something that can provide value? Is it worth, is it worth that whatever learning curve to, to bring it in because it provides, it provides sufficient value? I, I definitely tend to be in a, a Luddite when it comes to adopting new frameworks and tools, because there is a, there is a period of high churn in the first couple of years where if you, if you, and the JavaScript community has this problem in space, because yeah. it's supposed to be younger folks who yeah. haven't, you know, really experience the pain <laughs> yet. Yeah. Um, but if you are trying to stay on the cutting edge, you're going to, you're going to exert a huge amount of time and effort just keeping up with that cutting edge. Yep. But if you consistently use five-year-old technology, um, then you can be fairly stable. Uh, yeah. I actually go out of my way to minimize the number of dependencies I have in my code bases because I find that the amount of time I save from big dependencies is often undercut by the time, amount of time I lose keeping up with their changes and right. their break and especially their breaking changes. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I, I I tend to to play with new stuff, but just to 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 see, you know, what things to watch out for. Um but yeah, I'm um I I like I was I was looking at something and they were talking about here's the 12 different tools you can use for Java testing. It's like, I don't know, what, what else do I need? It's like, I've got JUnit. Okay, I finally went to JUnit 5. Took me a while. Um, and then, uh, like, a search J and, like, all these other things, like, I don't know. I, I don't I don't, I don't, don't really find much use for them. Um, the, the one big one was test containers, which I think is, is super, uh, super valuable. But, um, you know, but it is definitely, like, how much is this going to save me? Is it going to be popular enough? Is it stable enough? And, and yeah, all those questions. Yeah, the people who op- hopped on Angular 1 uh, back in the day, they sure regretted I did. it. I totally yeah. regretted it. <laughs> well, I regretted it basically while I was using it, and I really just hated it. But it's like, okay, let me push on. Yeah. Uh, this was in the labs group, so I was allowed to, 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 right. to do that. And then, then NG2 came out, and like, what the heck? 
and basically yeah. threw it away. <laughs> uh, Wheatlaw mentions the JavaScript cutting edge changing every month. You know, it doesn't have to, though. Um, so my website, jamesshore.com, is run on actually a fairly sophisticated content management engine that I wrote in Node. Uh, and it runs not only jamesshore.com, but also agilefluency.org and letscojavascript.com. And all the training stuff I do is on there too. So it's a much bigger code base and set of content than it looks like just from, from visiting the website. And uh, I built that over 10 years ago originally. And I very rarely have to change it. I think there's two things that I've done over the years that have required significant changes. Actually, just one. I put in, I, I introduced async await at one point. That was, oh, and I changed the testing framework because right? I started out with, I don't remember what it was called, node unit or something like that, which was terrible. And then I switched to Mocha. And then more recently, I got tired of Mocha and replaced it with a home built testing framework because um, it worked better with my build system. But that's pretty much it. Like that's the, and, but the way, the, the secret there is that I don't use the cutting edge. Like I don't right. use anything. Like I literally don't use anything that's not at least five year old, five years old. I'm just now thinking, do I want to use TypeScript on this code base? <laughs> and the answer so far is still no. Right. Um, but back in 2013, people were saying you should use CoffeeScript. Oh God. And I was like, I remember that. <laughs> yeah. And, and all and those people, people who jumped on board. Well. Yeah. And I could have hopped on that bandwagon. But I didn't, and I sure I'm sure I'm glad I didn't. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So what this what this means is there are people watching us right now who are just turning off the channel <laughs> ang angrily. <laughs> it's like, what? You're not on the cutting edge. Why am I watching this crap? Uh, maybe it's, I mean, it, it's really interesting because like everybody wants to learn the new stuff, and I I feel like, and uh, and you're probably similar. Like, I want to get better at things that are not the the tools. Like yeah. I, I don't, I don't feel like learning React as hot and interesting and 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 maybe useful as it is. Um, I don't need to learn like. For me, the I get joy of like I figured out a different way to refactor this, or I figured out a better design. Um, and I think there's there's. I don't know. I, I, I know I, I kind of have always felt that way. Like I'm I'm not interested in in, in just shiny things. I'm I'm interested in like being better at, at at design yeah no i mean we've got 80 to 90 winners on this planet and the time we spend learning something is limited the time we have to learn something is limited um probably out of sleep at some point too and maybe you <laughs> yes. know socialize and and have meaningful relationships but um not that you know i'm a geek what what do i know about these things but uh but my point is is that the time you invest in the latest and greatest tooling spring react really knowing knowing these things well it's a treadmill you know five years from now that that time will have been wasted because you won't be able to use it but the time you invest in understanding fundamentals right like how to do good design what a higher order function is and how they work and when to use them um these are things that will stick with you forever yeah. so i'm i'm with you yeah. Yeah. Uh, i put my effort my mental effort into things that i think are timeless um, which means that I am not up on the latest and greatest frameworks, right. but that doesn't matter yeah. um, because when I need to work on those things, I can, uh, and I can learn them in the moment, the pieces I need to know for the code base I'm working on. Yep. And because we have a good sense of the fundamentals, we probably can figure out, oh, this is using this, this way of, of doing things. At least I found, found that to be true for learning parts yeah. of spring it's like i understand it's a very complex framework but i understand what it's trying to do here and 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 what these patterns are that that they're that they're leveraging so yeah exactly yeah like uh, i understand how dependency injection frameworks work in general so when you introduced right. me to what spring boot was doing i was right. like okay i see what's going on here and i know right. where the problems are going to be right because right. uh, i think i don't know if you remember the very first episode i asked you uh about the about the game service is that cached because that is one of the things that right. happens yes. with, with dependency injection frameworks. Yep. Um, yeah. Yeah. Kotlin JS looks really interesting because I was I was thinking about uh, as Wheatlaw mentions. Um, I, I'm always uncomfortable with with sort of. I don't know, they used to call them transpilers. I don't know if they still do, but like I I 
I remember working on GWT back when when it was a thing, the Google web thing mm -hmm. that would basically compile Java. You basically write the front end in Java and it would compile it. But there were lots of restrictions. It was awful. Yeah, it, it originally was called the Clojure <laughs> compiler, I yeah. think. Yeah. And and uh uh I remember evaluating and saying, no, this this is not going to work because it was it was just too hard to integrate it with some other stuff that we had that was already in JavaScript. And I was like, uh, if I'm going to have to deal with this boundary talking to JavaScript anyway, I may as well just learn how to write JavaScript. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm always wary about compiling one language to, to JavaScript. Yeah. Which is usually the way it works. It's usually JavaScript's the target these days, uh, although WebAssembly is, is a new target. But I'm always wary of that because like, how do I debug it and how do I tell, uh, yeah. Yeah. Although JavaScript is such a common target that it's actually got a pretty good answer to that with, um, uh, oh, what are they called? Map source, source maps. Yeah. Source maps. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I have the same concern. I've been doing a lot of work with TypeScript lately and, <laughs> and, uh, I actually really like it, but I'm still not going to change to it. Like there's a major hit in compilation speed yes. uh, with yes. it. And so I'm just waiting for uh, for JavaScript to get types as a first class citizen, and then I'll support it. Like I'm not gonna because yeah. the problem with these these TypeScript is trying hard, but the problem with these compiled to JS languages eventually, JS is sort of the English of programming languages. It it, it absorbs all the good ideas from all the other programming languages right. in sort of a funky way where you know sometimes you say I then E, and then sometimes you say E then I, right. but. Um, and those other languages go away as a result. And then you're stuck maintaining them like CoffeeScript. Right. And the same thing is happening with TypeScript to a lesser degree. There are now two ways in TypeScript to say that something is private. The <laughs> way that TypeScript used to do it and the official JavaScript way of right. saying something is private. Right. Because JavaScript does now have the ability to have private methods and variables right. that it didn't used to have. And they're different. So it's it's a maintenance burden. Yeah, Don't Tad, she says, are big company sponsors helpful in deciding the adoptions? Well, if it's Google, no, because that, 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 anything from Google will die eventually, or sooner, or sooner rather than later. TypeScript, I don't think it'll die, but, but yeah, like those things is, it's, it's targeting a moving target. Yeah. And so, and so that, it's that a very can, quickly moving target. And it's a, yeah. And they, they, they are moving quite quickly. Yeah. The, the one thing about Microsoft, so when you say, when Google builds something, it's not Google building it, it's some small team at Google building it. Right. And whether or not that lasts or not yeah. is, is a thing. It's debatable. Microsoft doesn't really work that way, um, especially for something big like TypeScript. Yeah. Uh, they, they really care deeply about backwards compatibility. Yeah. And so I have more trust for Microsoft stuff. Although yeah. Microsoft stuff tends to be kind of nasty. Um, in in general, I actually think TypeScript is pretty good, um, but they are really good at backwards compatibility and supporting things long term. Yes. So I would be more likely to get to go with something from TypeScript that was widely used yeah. than something from Google that was widely used. Yeah. But in general, um, I need to see really wide adoption of something and stability before I'll start before I'll consider it, because otherwise I think the risk of it going away mm -hmm. is too high. Unless it's a simple library that I can wrap and right. then right. then I'll just do it. But if you're talking about like a, something that's gonna be really hard to change away from, like a programming language or, or a framework like Spring Boot or React, um, then you want to know that it's stable. And a lot of these things aren't, even if they've been around for a while, like how hard is it to move from this version to the next version? Yeah. All right, should we do All some right. programming? Maybe we should do some coding. I don't know. I mean, we still got two and hours and a quarter. We, we could spend another two that. hours <laughs> talking about design. Um, so what we've been doing in the code, oh, just a quick reminder for those of you who didn't hear it at the beginning, a program note, uh, Ted will be streaming next week. I will not be joining because I'm going to be working on my training course. And uh, training course is on April 11th. This is kind of your last chance to sign up. So if you've been considering it, now is the time. So um, what we've been doing is we've been having kind of far too much trouble <laughs> putting our new game database in place um, because a lot of the tests have been working against an in-memory fake database. Um, right. And the assumptions that that fake made are not the same assumptions that the nullables make. Right. And 
we could program the nullable to use a fake internally and then everything would just work. But because we like pain and because we thought it would good be, be a good exercise to share on stream, we're actually modifying the tests. And part of the reason for that is that we've discovered kind of what we were talking about at the beginning, that the tests are doing a lot of manipulating of state, which mm -hmm. is not really what the tests should be doing because right. it's not what the tests are about. Yeah. And so we want to fix that. Um, and it's giving us an opportunity to sort of look at the tests in detail. So when we left off, we had, we'd been going through that over on line 59 on the right. Um, we've got the old implementation, which is the in-memory database. Right. And on line 60, we have the new implementation, which of course is causing our test to fail. Right. So uh, where do you want to start? Should we just start with view controller test and go through these one at a time and see if we can fix them? That's a place to start. Let's see. And maybe maybe put the test, like let's work on one test. Let's make the test pass again. So change things back on the right there. And so which test is the one that's actually breaking here? So uh, let's, sure. well, let's make sure. I'm just going to run this test class. So, oops, no, the test class. So these are all passing, and then if we change it, um, basically all of these are failing. Every single one? Yep. Yeah. OK. So um, let's just study these for a moment. So we've got post to start game, starts the game. Um, we're creating the game service. We're creating the controller. This is not using any of the spring crap. So right. it's just building right. it. Right. Um, we start the game and then we assert that the game round is completed is true. Can we see the view controller code? Yep. Yeah. So it's basically calling start. And that's what's uh, where we're saving it. And so here um, we're basically assuming that when we load it to find out whether the round is completed, we're going to say that it, it must be true because it, we started it um, and therefore yeah it, yeah so this is a case i think where the sociable tests are obscuring the behavior really all that we're testing here is we're testing that a method is called and so mm -hmm. a mock would say this method was called right i i don't love you know i i don't like that sort of test i don't like um in it, uh, what do they call it? Interaction. -based Interaction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that just feels like uh, now I'm not testing behavior. I'm testing. I'm testing internal what we've written. The behavior is we're telling the game service to start. And there's so little behavior there. Yeah. So like, so we... so this this test and and there and we'll. We might come across some more. This was um, originally written to help test drive the connection between the controller and and the domain and the application. Basically, I want to make sure before you know before I wrote this line of code, uh, it mm -hmm. failed, and now yeah. when I wrote this line of code, it passes. Yeah. Um, and and now it's it's once I've written other code that sort of depends on that. Is this test really necessary anymore? It... I think it is because I'm hoping that we'll actually modify the other tests so they don't call start game. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, line 36, there's so, I, I, this is something I see frequently. The less your code is doing, the harder it is to test because mm -hmm. there's less to get a handle on. Right. Right. Um, so I guess what I'm trying to think here is ultimately what's the important thing here? Checking that round completed is sort of a side effective way of, exactly. of getting yeah. at it. Right. Um, I mean, we, we could, although this is, this is more, we are doing an emit. And so we could just put an output tracker. I think that was the other thing we looked at. Yeah. You know, we, we put in the output tracker and said that we are going to emit when the game is saved. Um, what if. What if we started tracking things like state changes? Game started, for example, as an event. Uh, you know, 
Okay, I'm glad you mentioned that because one of the things that um, is is very popular these days, and it's been pop, you know, sort of in and out of popularity for for a long time, is, is basically event driven kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And um, there is uh, this idea of of having the object sort of say, "Here's the actual sort of transition." Like I transitioned, and and now you can sort of query it, and so you can. Mm -hmm. There's a way of doing this on on domain objects to basically say, "Hey, what." What events occurred? Because it might have actually been multiple things that occurred, and it can sort of mm -hmm. gather them up. Um, so I very much like that idea of, of tracking uh, the, those those transitions. Yeah, yeah. And um, the output tracker is not actually something that you do on a nullable object. It's something that you can do on anything. And although I've yet to come into a encounter a situation where that was useful in production, mm -hmm. I can totally see it being something that you'd mm -hmm. want to have in production. Like mm -hmm. I want to know when this when this state transition occurs. Yeah. Yeah. We've programmed the output trackers right now in a way that is not super useful in production because it stores every transition transaction that's ever been made right. and it doesn't alert you, right? But I can imagine in the future discovering that output tracker or output listener needs more capability to make it more useful in production. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are definitely cases where uh treating it more like a, an, an event capture device um, yeah. and then being able to, to say, you know, what, what were the transitions or what, or what were the interesting events, whether they were transitions or not? Um, yeah. what, are the, what are the sort of the interesting events? Yeah. Um, so I wonder if we should do that. We, should we change this from emitting the game to emitting the behavior? Because game mm -hmm. service is kind of a black box. It doesn't return any values right. most of the time. Right. Um, let's just look through the other test. Do you mind if I drive for a second? Yeah, go for it. Okay, so which, let's see. Oh, no, my, my IDE has crashed. Oh, no. Uh, why don't you drive? Okay. As I was saying. <laughs> Uh, be great if you would drive for a moment, Ted. Sure. Uh, so yeah, we've got post to, to start the game starts the game. Uh, go back to view controller. I just want to see what what the correlation is here. And we've got new game started when last when get last roll returns empty dice roll. That name does not speak to me. So we create the game service. We create the game controller. Those should probably fit, be factored out. We start the game. That's probably just setting up state. We yeah, that's tell a terrible. The view name. controller. <laughs> What'd you say? I said, that's a terrible method name. I'm sure I wrote it, but that was a, a terrible method name. Basically, it's saying um, when a new game is started, the last roll should be empty. Yeah, that doesn't say that at all. <laughs> uh, okay, so last roll is just saying, so, so that's interesting. Because that, again, that doesn't seem like behavior that should be tested at the view controller level. That sounds like game game service logic or game logic. Um, yeah, so, so this probably was written because I was testing the connection to, to getting the current hand. Um, but yeah. then I think in this case, once I got checking the, the thing that came back, um, then I, yeah, I agree this, this one actually might be, might be redundant from a, it doesn't check anything useful at this layer. Yeah. Let's, let's do this, Ted. Let's, uh, yeah, Astrid names are hard. <laughs> and also I think that's one of the most valuable things about, uh, teaming or pairing, mm -hmm. um, is that I make such my, my designs and particularly my names are better when I pair, um, and these days, I don't get a lot of opportunities to pair, except when I'm working at a client site, which is part of the reason I enjoy doing this with you, Ted. And so I know that my names are bad, but I just can't come up with as good of a name as when I'm talking it over with somebody. Because there's just a different Well, and also, like, sometimes just somebody else saying it, it's like, oh, you're yeah. right. That is, like, oh, my God, that is awful. <laughs> Let me go change that. <laughs> I'm embarrassed that I even thought of that. It must have made sense, but, yeah. Yeah. So I think what I'd like to do, Ted, is I'd like to, like, put the game service back to the test all passed. Mm -hmm. I'd like to go through it and I'd like to update the test to be better tests mm -hmm. now, um, including factoring out our helper method. Um, 
Mm -hmm. and then from there refactoring it to to right. uh, to use the new game data. Yeah. But before we do that, let's let's just continue through this. So um you scroll up a little bit more. So, yeah, exactly, Suiji. Um, make the change easy, make yeah. the easy change. Yeah. Uh, I don't think when new game started, then last roll is empty is really what's being tested here. It's really just last roll is being tested, I think. Or last. Oh, you've uh, bring up view controller again, please. Oh, sorry. Um, current hand is what's being tested there on last roll. So last roll gets the current hand is really what that's doing. Yes, right. and this is this is a name change that hasn't sort of propagated, right? Because we changed this used to be last roll, and this was just basically just just delegating it. But now, got it, uh, got it, got it. so this is so this can is we change hand. that test name to be get current hand? We absolutely can. Or gets current hand. We can say current hand. No, I, I'm not. Oh. I don't think that we don't care about the, when the new game is started. Really, all we care about is the current hand. So it's just testing the current hand. I think the implementation is poor for that. But um, if ultimately what it's doing is testing line 41 on the right, right, the the fact that the new game was started is irrelevant. That's why I kind of think this whole test is actually not not pulling its weight. Because yeah, we but are... I don't think we have anything else that's testing uh, last roll. Right here on line 50. This is actually done testing the con. This is asserting against the contents. Well, again, so... Okay, let's let's not change it yet. But I think uh, again, we've got some some. The tests are talking about game behavior, but what they're testing, I think, is tended to be the view controller. So game started, roll dice button rolls the dice. Um, again, game started. We don't care. That's just state set up. Roll the dice is. I think roll dice is testing roll the dice, and then the last roll. Mm, okay. Yeah, is a coincidence. Yep. Yep. So line 40 is testing roll the dice. Line right. 28 is testing current is testing right. last roll. So what do we call it? It's just uh let's just say to do last roll. Or can get current hand, that works for me. Is that okay? Yeah. I can change yeah. what you said. I was, just, I was like, I heard what you're saying, but I was typing something else. So <laughs> I said to do current hand, um, but I think can get current hand is is actually better. Okay. And then if we're going to use that kind of phrasing, then line 40 should be can roll dice. Okay, let's keep going. Score categories returned scored categories. So that's calling scored categories. Um, yeah, so can get score categories. Uh, Suiji, that was my first thought, but I think we're actually going to rename it from last roll to, oh, no, we're not because it's a public interface. Uh, we totally can because uh, Spring doesn't care what the name of this method is. All it cares about is the annotation. Got it. Got it. So we can totally change that. Okay. So uh, assign last role to category, then category is assigned and scored. So start game roll dice. So that's really assigned to category. So can assign role to category. Role or current hand? Uh, back, uh, current hand, yeah. It's called a role, but we're going to change that, right? Yeah. yeah, exactly, Suiji. That's why I didn't want to do it that way. Uh, keep dice re-rolls the non-kept dice. Um, can you scroll down on the right so we can see re-roll? So it looks like it, yeah. So that's actually doing two things. It's not just calling reroll, it's actually doing some logic. It's basically, this is the input that comes in from the outside, comes in through the API, 
And so it's basically um, ensuring that that it understands what the what the con what that you're you're saying keep these ones as opposed to discard these ones. Yeah. Yeah. I think I I think that name is fine, but I might reword it to be um reroll keeps specified dice. Yep. And then it should be reroll, not rerolls. Okay. Now let's look on the right. So we've got reroll, we've got assign roll, we've got score categories, we've got roll dice, dice, we've got last roll, we've got start game. That's one, two, three, four, five, six things on the right. And do we have six tests? We've got six tests. Yeah. Okay. No, I mean, ultimately, this. I think. The tests were disguising what was really happening here, which is we basically have one method for each endpoint. Yeah. Um, Dota says domain driven design covers some of how system. Um, yeah. Should we take a break? Yes. Let's take a break. All right. See you in a few. Go grab a drink. We'll be right back. All right. We're back. Okay. So, so we got to, we understand what these tests are doing now. Um, you've refamiliarized and I've mm -hmm. first familiarized. Um, and so now what I'd like to do is I'd like to, I think what I'd like to do next, I'd like to modify the test to be speaking more clearly about what it is they're actually doing. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually see two approaches to this. We can use the behavior or the um, collaborator-based isolation that I was talking about earlier, mm -hmm. or we can use a uh, output tracking sort of event-based approach. Mm -hmm. um, but before we do that, I think it does make sense well, maybe it doesn't. I was going to say maybe it makes. I was going to say it makes sense to pull out the duplication we see on line eighteen and nineteen and twenty nine and thirty and so forth. But actually, I find that premature abstractions end up being problematic. So mm -hmm. probably we should refactor and then or modify the tests and then pull out the, the yeah. commonalities. Yeah. Um. So collaborator-based isolation is, again, we set the expected value in the test to be the, um, to be the result of a method call. And in this case, that method call would be calling gameservice.start. But then we need to compare two game services, which would be weird. Yeah. But we could do it. Then we could, the game service has the way of giving us the game, right? Or does it? Uh, yes. So it has a method, which is basically, um, the, where was it? The, basically the load game gives it, gives it the game. And that's used internally. Yeah, but then it pulls it from the game database. It's, yeah. Right. Yeah, because it, game, because game service doesn't, doesn't hold domain state. It holds ways of getting the domain state, which it gets by load game. Okay. All right, I've been holding this in my back pocket for a while, but I want to talk to you about a completely way of design, completely different way of designing this code, and see what your thoughts are. All right, um, but that's going to require me to restart my IntelliJ because it crashed. Ah, okay. Uh, so let me restart it, and it may be that as I talk this through, I'll realize what a terrible idea it is because that's what usually happens when my design <laughs> fantasies hit the real world. But uh, let's see what happens here. Because if you think this design idea is a good idea, it might influence what we decide to do here. Because mm -hmm. I'm I'm feeling like the existence of um, of game service is part of what's causing problems for us. Because if we were operating on a game, it would be easier.
So one moment while I connect. I'm gonna do Please a work, code crash. together. Please don't crash on me again. <laughs> I don't think we've had a single stream where I've tried to use code together where it's worked properly the whole stream. No, it's worked at least partially, but not for the whole thing. Yeah. All right. Can you see me? Yes. <laughs> All right. Good, good. Should Here's I do a, a fantasy. Should I do a commit before we, or is this? Uh, have we changed anything yet? Um, I mean, we renamed the test names. Yeah, go ahead and do a commit. Um, because I think, we'll, I mean, definitely what I'm about to do uh, is, is not permanent. But I'm going to write it as, as sort of code. So, okay. yes, yeah, so Luigi, I've been complaining about game service from pretty much day one. Yeah. Um, I think in the very first stream, or maybe the first couple of streams, I kept that complaining in my inside voice, and I didn't say it out loud. But I've, I've had a reaction to it basically since I first saw it. Yeah. It's been an ongoing <laughs> joke. And the thing is, is even though I'm unhappy about it, I mean, it's often the case when I in my code and code that I wrote entirely, wrote and designed entirely for myself. Um, I will often be unhappy with design and I'll have this sort of frown on my face every time I look at it. It's like, eh, I don't like this. Um, but have no idea how to make it better. And that may be the case here too. Like I know game service makes me unhappy, but um, do I know a better way? No. Okay, here is the crazy wacky idea. I don't like, so game service is effectively a global with no state. And I hate those so much. And they're very much something you see in dependency injection framework based frameworks, dependency mm -hmm. injection based frameworks. Um, I know what your your first reaction to what I'm about to say is, but we've got another controller. So set that aside for a moment. But what I would like to do is something along the lines of this game database dot um, execute. Something like that. And so if you type stuff, I didn't see it. All I see is the commented outline, which is weird. Oh, well, that's just so bloody charming. Um, <laughs> yes, I typed stuff. Because you were saying it, it's like, oh, that sounds interesting. And I don't see it. There we go. Now we can see it. I wonder if uh, something. Oh, you saw the high Ted, but you I didn't the... see the other stuff I typed. Yeah. So. Okay, now that's typed, but in the wrong place. Yeah, I moved it up there. Okay. It's not seeing the stuff I type in the method. That's weird. And it's not seeing, like, it's so messed up right now. Um, oh, it's so frustrating. And I don't want to share my screen because then that completely messes up um, the streaming layout. Uh, yeah, well, you can see on line 43, 44, and 45, that's what I intended to type on line 49. Did I just move it? Let's see what happens. Okay. Yep. I see that. You can see that? That's mm -hmm. so weird. I wonder if it was just a temporary glitch and it lost, lost track of stuff. I don't know. Anyway, that's kind of what I'm thinking. And then up here, yep. um, we'd have something like, because this one does not actually need to save the game. Mm -hmm. um, this would just be, oh, is my audio okay? Uh, it was glitchy for a second, but sounds fine. Yeah, I just, I had my, I had Zoom tell me it switched microphones and then switched back. Well, it's just, everything's falling apart here. Yes. Software quality. Mm -hmm. And I, these are probably not the best names, but there's basically two things you're going to want to do. You're going to want to 
load, do something and save, mm -hmm. and you're going to want to load, mm -hmm. query, and return. Mm -hmm. um, and then start game would actually be just The main thing here is that once we're operating on the game, um, it allows us to get rid of the game service. All the game service is doing is loading and saving. Yes. And there's the kept dice, which is a little bit different, but even that I think could be done. Uh, we can move more of that logic into the game itself. Right, except for yeah, that's what you said. Except for notifying when uh, when you score a category. I'm sorry, what? So when you score a category, when you sign a, a the current hand, it sends out the the notification the the notification, and yeah. it does it does the the fetch as part of something else. So this is an idea that's been rolling around my brain for a little while. Um, I see two problems with it. I, I saw one problem with it, but the thing you just mentioned is a, is a second problem with it. Um, Problem one is that now we'd be repeating this logic in both yacht controller and view controller. Mm -hmm. um, and we're, we'd basically be repeating one line, the game database.execute and the game database.query. Right. That might be a good thing. I think it depends on how similar and different the, the different controllers, you know, the different front ends we're putting on this mm -hmm. are. Um, that might be worth exploring. But if they're really pretty much identical, then I don't like having that du duplication. Yeah, and then the other problem they, is exactly what you mentioned is yeah. the notification. Is is that now also going to be the responsibility of the controller to do that notification? Right. And is that duplicated? Right. Yeah, so they are precisely duplicated because the application layer is, even though this is a very tiny one, it's intended to be the high-level use case of what you're trying to do. And, and the adapter's job is just to say, well, how do I display this hand? How do I display the current hand? Do I translate it into HTML? Do I translate it into to JSON? But the commands and queries against the application are exactly the same, or intended right. to intended to be exactly the same. Yeah, the only case where I could see it not being identical is if for some reason we had a front end. Let's say we have a mobile front end, so we trust it a bit more. Um, and we don't want to hit the database on every command. Um, so we cache more on the front end. But then you've got a problem like on mobile, your application can disappear out from under you. You don't want to lose your state. So I don't know if that's actually realistic. Yeah, I think um, so what's what's interesting is is uh, if you started out this way, right? Let's say you're you're creating an application, it's like, okay, I need a controller and I need to access this stuff from the database. You might totally start out implementing it this way. And then mm -hmm. you'd say, "Oh, I have this other controller. It's doing pretty much the same thing." How you pull how, it out? Into I pull it out into a service, um, yeah. uh, or a, or another way is to pull it out into individual commands, which has a benefit of there's um, a finer granularity, uh, which may or may not be good, but but it can make testing somewhat easier. But then you end up with more classes, which then has can you know where how do you know which command to to create and who creates the commands and then you've you've now got another class that's managing the creation of commands and and so there's there's again that, that trade off um yeah. but it, but it's it's always interesting because i see a lot of like you know people learning spring or or, or similar kinds of things and and creating all the layers with something with a project that doesn't need all those layers because um, mm -hmm. like they only have one controller and they only have one repository and it's like the stuff in the middle is doing nothing because it's only delegating because they don't really have much of a domain and so in that case yeah totally put the repository right up in the controller let it access the stuff and then mm -hmm. then that's totally fine um the question then is what do you do when oh now i need another controller and it's it's a different uh, interaction mechanism um oh now i have side effects uh, uh, and there are other ways to handle the side effects. You could say, um, you know, the game database broadcasts an event. Spring has that. Whether you mm -hmm. want to use that or not is a separate issue. But it could broadcast an event when you saved a, a game. And then listeners could listen and, and then do the appropriate notification. I don't care for that, but you could, one, one could, could do that. Yeah. Um, hey, Tramsters. Hey, Tramsters. So, so let's, let's look at a second option. So 
this was my first thought, but then it sort of ran up against the grounds of exactly what you're talking about is that we're, we're duplicating. Um, so let's, let's imagine another scenario. And I actually want to imagine a scenario where we have multiple games. So the ID is going to come into this. Um, so let's, let's do this. So current design. Can you still see what I'm typing yep. here? Yep. Hallelujah. Um, current design is, I think it's game service dot roll dice, correct? Yes. Um, how would that support multiple games? Would you pass in an ID? Yeah, the ID would have to be passed in. So get an ID coming in as a parameter to, to the roll dice method, the one that uh, Spring calls. And then whether I turn that into a, a class or not, basically I get an ID and that, that gets passed along into, into the service. And it would right. then validate of, does that ID exist? If not, then I'm going to throw an exception. We'd say not found, and otherwise it would go fetch it by that ID. Yeah, yeah, and then the the controller, of course, would be responsible for handling that yep. not found exception or right. game corrupted it would exception. Translate or, that or exception to, yeah, you know, database not found translated into four hundred four. So the the second option, I'm just sort of thinking this through. Um, it's actually not much different than option. What I've put is option one. But I was going to say, well, if we keep the saving inside of game service or inside the game, then we could just say game dot roll dice, but then that raises the question of where do we get the game? And so right. we still have to get the game from right. somewhere. Right. Um, this right here, game audit, you know, game database saves the game. And design option two is basically kind of similar. It's game database dot load game ID. Um, and then game dot roll dice, right? And game saves the game. I think the real issue here is we're missing. See, if I were coding this without Spring, I would just pass the game into the controller. We don't have a way of doing that generically, though, do we? Passing the... Like, can we make... Can we, in Spring, have something that just operates on every endpoint and figures out the idea of the game and loads the game? You can. You can create uh, an intercepting filter mm -hmm. um, that uh, <clears throat> would see an ID come in, go look it up in the database, and then basically allow you to then do that yeah so it looks like you're getting a game um but this but it's magical filter somewhere else that's doing the work of of retrieving from the database and potentially throw an exception and that exception would have to be captured and translated and, and so on you yeah. you could do that i which would, if we didn't have uh, to would, use magic to do it i would like it i would but... i would hate that because it would be like how the heck is a game being passed in here yeah and then you got to yeah. go you, there's no way to know, even by looking at this code, to know, you know, maybe IntelliJ could help you by saying, hey, by the way, there's a filter that would do this, and you'd follow that along. But to me, that feels like all the bad bad things about aspect-oriented programming, which is you have no idea what's going on. Right, right. Um, yeah, so that's an option, but I don't think it's a, a great option, um, given, given the constraints we're under. Um, so yeah, I think I think all that's left then is something like this.
which is really not that much different than option two. Yeah. Um, it's actually the same thing. And I'd argue it's it's slightly worse. Well, yeah, because now the game is responsible for yeah. loading itself. Yeah. Something something that and and saving itself. Um something that's sort of a hidden assumption all of this is that game is at the application level and so it can do randomization and so forth and it's okay with that um and also the notification can happen at that level too Yeah, that feel that just feels like too much responsibility to to put to put on on game. Well, let's take a look at game, because um, part of the reason. So, what is game doing? Game is. Part of my thinking in this is that game isn't doing much. Game is delegating. Game is very much traffic copying. Can re-roll. Where's can re-roll being called? Uh, so it's called so that the UI can know if, if it should show the button or not. So, yeah, but where is that being called? Uh, that's being called by by the roll result. It's in Yacht Controller, but not in yeah. the View Controller? Um, Probably an incomplete implementation of the view controller. The view controller okay. would also want to know that. It just never never yeah. got to that feature. Yeah. Um, I think if it were me, I would probably go with option one except for the notifiers. Um, because here we've got the game saves itself. I don't love that. Yeah. Um, And that's just because I don't like the duplicate the the thin the thinness of this. Mm -hmm. is, is that really a problem? Eh. Is it is it more of a problem than duplication than duplicating this logic everywhere? If we were to test this, if we were to test view controller, um We write a test of this. What we would do is our expected value would be game. We create a game. We'd set up our game database with that game. We'd say our expected value was the result of game dot roll dice, and um, then we'd assert that the game database had saved that expected value. Because what we'd be testing is mm -hmm. that game database saved a game right, right. that had had the dice rolled right that feels no different than than using a fake and interact would you say it. that feels no different than sort of using a fake and, and saying i expect the, the the contents of the the fake to to have changed what's well, the collaborator based isolation yeah, yeah um we'd be saying the game database has saved the game and then the expected value is just you know the results of calling roll dice right um we could set up the expected value differently we could say the expected value was a game with these dice on it um that would be the same i'd be fine with that too if we test this then what we're going to do is we're going to say game service has rolled the dice right well that's a nicer test to to, to write twice than the test we're talking about here
I think I'm talking myself into your current design. <laughs> given the, the given the constraints, I think I think it 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 fits well. Yeah. Um, I'm still going to want to combine game into game service because I just don't love how little game service is doing. The problem is, is once we the, the problem with that is that I don't I don't like game service being um, a global. So. so can you say more about why? Because it's it's not a because we can't instantiate it in any state. Like if we want to do anything with game service, we've got to set up a database. Um. Right, because it has no state because it's an orchestrator among other things that that do have state. Right, and that's that's what bugs me. I don't like things that don't have that. I don't like code that does that. I don't mm. like orchestrators. Okay. Yeah. Um, because part of what's been going on with view controller test is we can't just create the game service with the game in it that we want. Actually, we could. We could say game service dot create null and and give yeah. it the game. Yeah. We have that ability, don't we? Uh, I believe we do. Um, yeah. Well, we'd have to push it into a game database right now. Uh, but no, I think it's I think it's in there. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. With we game. have with game. We actually added that. I think in in in, the, in that context, we just haven't used it yet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, now you know sort of where my brain has been at. Yeah. I've been holding this in the back of my head because I haven't felt like it was fleshed out enough to work. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm still not convinced that it's a good idea. Uh, so let's keep going with what you got. But I wanted I wanted you to see where I was where I was going with it to see if it sparked any ideas from you. Yeah, I mean, again, it's sort of like if I were starting, if I was if if I didn't have two controllers, um, I might use one something a bit closer, and I might not. I might not even have a, a a game service. The game service stuff might might be in there, um, but I, I guess I don't I, I don't mind the the sort of separation between the this this service thing and and uh, and the controller. I, it's yeah, you know, it's it's a in the sort of idiomatic Java with with frameworks. It's pretty pretty standard. Um, well, typically as, when I see dependency injection frameworks use a service, the service is basically loading. It's not. It's not. It's not acting as a proxy like your game services. That's what's a little bit weird about the way you're doing it. Is that truly idiomatic for Spring? Well, I mean, there's some stuff where where it's proxying. If if we mean delegation, where it's not adding anything. Um, like the currently the the a lot of the load stuff the query stuff the service is not pulling its weight right so right um there uh there i'd say yeah for all all these things um certainly it's not pulling its weight uh mm -hmm. and why not just push the, the push the repository directly into the controller because it needs it and and that's totally valid and i would and i would totally do that um uh, I do find, uh, and that's a common mistake, uh, is if you're not going to do anything, uh, certainly for querying, then then just pull it directly from from the repository. There's no there's no reason to have an intermediary. Um, but a lot mm -hmm. of the times, I've found that commands or, or mutations cause side effects, not just writing it to the database, but also doing notification or perhaps uh, other kinds of things that that need to happen um, happens often enough that I'm I'm fine to pay a little bit of the price up up front to to segregate that into into a it, service it, class, and then it really, really becomes only about the service layer only becomes things that that make changes things that are, that are immutable. Yeah. It's really the notification that I think is the death knell for my idea, not so much the duplication because two controllers is not so much duplication. Um, and it reads clearly. Like I really like the way, um, the way it reads, saying 
game database dot execute. Um, but that that completely fails when you've got the notifier in the loop as well, because now you've got the controller doing too much. Yeah. And I'm, I'd be okay if there was only one controller doing that, but if we've got two controllers doing yeah. that, now it's yeah. got to be coordinated. It's a yeah. problem. Yeah. Um, I think I think what would make me happy with game service is if we got rid of the load the the query functions and just had a way of getting the game, um, which we do. And if the commands did more work. Um So let's, but let's wait and see where that goes. I think to bring us back to the present, I think I've talked myself into saying that the best way to do this is to ask the game what its um, what its output is. Mm -hmm. Do the output tracking on the game? Right. We. So let me, can you see me typing in view controller test? Uh, yes. Okay. So far. So what we had planned to do last time, and we actually, hey, Joyous. Um, actually, I, I'm just seeing some stuff in the chat. Suiji says, uh, where do you push that kind of duplication with starting out option one and needing another one doing the same thing? Yeah, I don't know, Suiji. I think we'd end up with something a lot like game service, probably with a different name. Um, yeah, so should we rename it? What would you yeah, call it? I think it, it maybe I think game commands or something like that might be might be what might sort of magically make my concerns go away. But let's hold off on that until we've okay. done a little bit more refactoring. Because I'm I'm I I I I don't like service. Yeah, I, I really it's one don't. of those generic terms. It's one like of those like yeah, object. exactly, exactly. And it's like yeah. uh, um, but it is also uh uh when people see it, they they know if they are familiar with anything, they sort of kind of know where where it fits, and so it's one of those um, for demonstration purposes. I call it service, but I really yeah. would. Uh, I think a yeah, I don't know about game transactions. That feels too too technical. Uh, I like yeah, no, game, I, game commands. It's a transaction or, script, though. So yeah, yeah. My first reaction when I saw that Suiji say that, yeah. I was like, oh yeah, that's exactly yeah. what they are. They're, yeah. they're they're the game transactions. Yeah, and and they are come somewhat transactional in that they fail, they work or they fail, right? They're right. one right. thing. Yeah. Um, game changes. But I'm I'm also with you in that people know what a service is in a dependency injection framework. Like it 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 has it sort of fits a niche that yeah. people recognize. Yeah. And this gets back to that question we had earlier right. about, you know, we got to do what people expect, otherwise right. they won't be able to understand the design. Right. Um but I think game commands or or something like that, I think uh might might jar people a, a bit, but I I think people would get it. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. So if, agreed. Yeah. So previously, I think what we were going to do for testing this, we were going to do something like this. We we're going to say game service dot create null game. Can you see what I'm typing yep. here? Yep. Um. And then we we're going to say view controller dot start game. Let's assume we have the view controller already. Mm -hmm. And then we were going to say, oh, and we we're also going to say service games equals service dot track games. And we're going to say start the game. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to say assert that service games dot output dot contains um, game started or something like that game uh let's let's actually start games on a good example um because it's kind of a weird one let's talk about get hand, let's talk about roll dice okay so yeah let me let me just sort of experiment with this before we start mm -hmm. coding it 
So we've got a game. I don't know how we create the game, but that seems about right. And so that how, that's how we create the game service with particular roles, right? right. Mm -hmm. You are seeing what I'm typing here, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Just got to keep checking. Yeah. Um, and then we'd say view controller dot start dot. The game's already started at this point because we've got it here. So we should be able to just say view controller dot roll dice. Mm -hmm. We'd have the games. So we'd assert that the game tracker, and I guess the expected game would be one that has those dice, yeah. Yeah, which I guess would just be the result of saying roll dice. So we could either do it this way, which is sort of the collaborator-based isolation approach, which mm -hmm. is simulate mm -hmm. what's happening in view controller, um, which is just calling roll dice. Or we could make a game You know, something like that. Right. I know that's not the actual syntax. Um, mm -hmm. So that's option one, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That's sort of where we were going at the end of the last stream. Mm -hmm. um, now that it's finally coming back to me. Uh, option two, though would be much simpler in a way. Um, we just do something like this, mm -hmm. say view controller dot roll dice and then assert that service tracker dot contains right Right. Yep. Yeah. And we wouldn't have to put the dice rolled in there, but if we're looking at the behavior of the game, that seems like the kind of thing we'd want yeah, to include. Yeah, yeah. I think that would be definitely the... the... Yeah, I, I, I like that much better. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, what's interesting is that it definitely has the, the flavor of spying. Um, mm -hmm. uh but it's not spying and and it's it's something that this could very likely be used in production yeah and that that is the difference it yeah. i think a well designed api um when you track its output it's going to look very similar because mm -hmm. you're going to say do this thing and then right. you're going to have done that right. thing right but the difference here is that as we change the code the behavior doesn't change whereas right. the api does change right um i mean the, unless the behavior actually changes but you, you know what i'm getting yeah, at yeah yeah and one very clear difference here is that we know which that the command is going to tell us which dice were rolled yes whereas we're not passing that dice to roll here because that's not the controller's responsibility right right well i like option two yeah it's kind of giving me a warm fuzzy feeling inside um and it's kind of leaning us to this thing as well, mm -hmm. which is interesting. Mm -hmm. hmm. The only downside is that we've already put in this output tracking that tracks the game stuff, how the games are being saved. But this really does feel like the right approach because what is, like saving games is a side effect. That's something that game service does for us not something the controllers really need to care about. They just need to know that they're manipulating the game. 
Yeah, controllers don't need to know, although there may be other pieces, there may be other components that actually do care when it's saved. So for example, when it's saved, I want to now send the notification, but I only want to have that to happen if for sure it was saved. And that's actually going to be happening inside of game service. Right. And so there, so, right. So, service. so, you know, the, yeah. So, so it's sort of like, we'll test only, that with the game service test. Yeah. So only t it's like, so, so I agree. So it's sort of like, only tell me stuff that I, that is sort of domain stuff that I care about. Not mm -hmm. like you exactly said. Yeah. Yeah. So what that means is some of what we're doing with game service dot create null, um, let's see, we can do die rolls with average scores. We have it with die rolls in here twice. Interesting. Um, oh, yeah. Two oh, different, no. One is a list and one is a... Uh, uh, got it. Got it. Yeah. I hate arrays. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think you must have added this at some point off stream because I don't remember you doing that. Or maybe I'm just misremembering. Uh, I think we just found that it was easier in yeah. some cases, but... Yeah. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and reset, but let's let's start going towards option two. We'll have to redesign our game service dot track output mm -hmm. to track commands. And do you like the idea of having um, like subclasses of commands? How how do we want to do that? Um, that's a good question because each. And this is this is a, now I remember it's like the the tricky part about these kinds of event like things is each one has different information that it's going to need to hold on to. Yeah, um, well, I'll tell you how I would do it in JavaScript. Um, I don't know if this is going to be helpful or not, but it would be something like this. You get an array of commands back, um, and it would be of objects, and it'd be command. Uh, dice uh, or roll <laughs> and then dice rolled is two three four five six so it would just be sort of an algebraic data type in that yeah yeah and that's and that's where an intersection yeah and that's where it's like uh how do, how do we do that can't with, really do that with a type um i mean we basically we could have uh um i think we have to have polymorphism aren't we Yeah. Interface, game command, output, or something with basically nothing in it. And then class dice rolled extends or implements game command output, or just game command. Yeah, so Suiji just mentions uh, uh, basically a map, and that's that's what we could do to to start out with. It's just a, it's just a map. I don't love that. Yeah, I mean it's a, it's a way of 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 basically doing things that are that are typeless. Um, yeah. Um, what do we have in here in game service? We've got because um, there's not that many commands. Yeah, there are. I was I was about to say it's like there's not that many commands. There's there's start. There's roll dice, which we want to have the dice that have been rolled. Yeah. We have re-roll, which is going to have the dice that were re-rolled. We have assign current hand, which is nothing. Um, that one's a private. Yeah, I mean, there are only three, what, three commands? Yeah, there's only three commands. And the, yeah, so I think actually it's... So we, we, we could say it always has dice rolled and sometimes it's just empty. Yeah, exactly. I think yeah. I think that's what it is. Yeah. It's um, it's that's yeah, just a record. It's the name, which is a string, and the dice, which is a list of integers. Yep. Yep. Okay, I think we've done enough design work. I think to to start implementing. Cool. Let me write this down. Yep. So we're gonna have a game command or something with a name and a dice rolled. And we're going to track the game commands. Is that enough for us to remember? I think so.
Okay. Please, All right. please reset. Oops. Uh, I think that's a good question, Suiji. What was the question? Is this um, for all the So that would be interesting. Choice? What if the command was just the name of the command and the current hand? Or what if it was just the game? And then we could ask the game what his current hand was or anything else we wanted to ask. I mean, it's really interesting because this is, this is basically uh, how do you how do you how do you design events? How do you define design event messages? Um, and do you, do you want a fat event that has basically everything you could ever possibly need, which would be just say here's game, or do you want sort of just enough for uh, for verifying that command? Um, I think since we're writing this for the test, let's not worry about what it might be used for in the future. Yeah, yeah, what yeah. Would, yeah. And, and if we put in the game, it's going to be a nightmare in the test to, to specify that. So let's just say the name and the dice, the actual dice roll, not the current hand, but the actual dice roll, because that's what we're going to care about in the test. Or to keep it even simpler, what we care about in the test is none of that. We only care about the name. Because the dice rolling is being done by the service. Mm -hmm. Our tests don't care which dice we're Yeah, so tests against the controller don't care about the stuff that the game service is already managing, right? Yeah. Right. We, we just said, let's put the dice in there yeah. because it makes and that's it why, feel again, a little feels, more production-y. Yeah, that's why it very much feels like a spy. It's like, was this was this method called? Um, yeah. But it's, but it's not. Uh, and it's just, yeah, we just cared to... Did service actually roll the dice? We don't care what the dice are. We don't care what the current hand is. We just want to know, did it actually do what, what we wanted it to do? Right. Um, well, we can I mean, you know, one of the things is we could start out there and we find that we need more, then we can always add more. Yeah, let's let's start out there. I think we've spent enough time talking about yeah. it, so yeah. let's do it. Um, so we need to go into game service tests, and we need to modify those. So our... You're, have you reset? I wasn't paying. Yes, attention. I reset. Yeah. Uh, maybe, okay. Maybe run all. And are all of our tests are passing. Uh, let's see. Yep. Okay. So um, we should have in here something about the test testing the output. So we have our game service tracker test. That's what we got here. Oh, this is it. Game yeah. service tracker test. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So rather than saying track saves, let's say track, let's add a new one called track commands mm -hmm. and we'll just start implementing that. And then once we're done with that, we can take track saves out because I don't think there's any need for us to track the saves in this new paradigm. So, um, so then this first test would go away. Uh, may I? Yep. Um, This would be our mm -hmm. tracker game command. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to call it tracker. Mm -hmm. Or if we wanted to be a little more sophisticated, we could say, Yeah, I, I, it just occurred to me like once we if if we're if we're not going to have variations, then uh, we could even just use an enum. Yeah. Uh, yeah, actually, we could. That's so just how does that work? Like that? Uh, it would be. 
something like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's easy enough to migrate from an enum to a polymorphic uh, mm -hmm. tree, isn't it? I think so. Polymorphic inheritance hierarchy. hierarchy. So, all right. So let's um, let's go ahead and create. Uh, let's go ahead and create a game command first. So I don't know if I like the name game command because I'm worried that somebody reading this is going to assume that that's how you command. Oh command well, yeah. So this is actually game event. Yeah, that's exactly right. Because it is an event, <laughs> and then yeah, this, no, is, you're, this is track, track events. events. Yeah. Which is, I, I was just reading an article about, like, you know, these are, these are what are, you know, are sort of straightening out some mm -hmm. confusion around messages. Just like, is this a command or an event? Yeah. 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 Um, all right. So game event. This is an enum. Do you want to make this an inner enum? That's what we said we were going to start with, right? Are you changing your mind on that? Uh, no, I was just wondering if this was a separate class or it's inside of game. Hmm. Game dot event. I mean, I kind of like that, but game is starting to get a bit large. Hmm. So I think I'd put it in a different file, okay. which I know is like I was like what? totally surprising. <laughs> game wants a separate file, all right? Before he changes his mind. Uh, so hey, don't expect consistency from me. <laughs> well, that's the, what was it the hobgoblin of small minds? Yeah, exactly. Um, so let's put it there because that's next to that. Uh, let's see. There, and we'll create this method. I just said, <clears throat> what's its problem? Oh, IntelliJ, you put it in the wrong place. Oh, put it in the test. Yeah, yeah. It's like, uh, I, I swear I do that half the time. Okay. Uh, and then this will be create enum constant. Okay. Uh, so, what does that look like? So that's going to fail because it's going to give us a. Um, oh, this is going to, yeah, we're going to get null, and that'll be a null pointer exception there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Sweet, you know how often I do that, put the code in the test directory. <laughs> okay, so this is super easy. Um, it's the same as before. You're going to need to make the listener up top. Yeah, so I'm going to move this code. Where should go right next to our existing tracker. Yep. And I'll make a note. We need to delete uh, the track saves. Uh, so we need a different listener. Yes. So, so if you scroll all the way up to the top, there's a listener you can clone. Yep. And it's going to be game event. This is a temporary call it's event listener. Which feels weird because it's not listening to events. Although Yeah. I would just call that listener and the old one old listener. Okay. Or delete mean listener. really shout at us. Okay. Uh, and so now this is return listener. That looks good. Create tracker. Uh, so now it should just be that the output doesn't have anything in it. Yeah. See, this is sorry. It's, it's, it's like this is where like I wish IntelliJ would learn from my mistakes. If I'm constantly creating classes from a test, it should know by now, with its you know fancy AI machine learning, uh, that I always want it to go in, in production code. Well, not only that, but typically, if you're creating a class from a test, it should go in production. 
Like that should be the default, not the other way around. Certainly if I'm, yeah, certainly if I am having it do the quick fix of create this thing for me. Yeah. It's because otherwise I would, if I was creating like, you know, test code that I was refactoring into a class, it would be a different kind of refactoring. So, yeah. Yeah. But the quick fix, you're almost always, yeah. like, that's just the way testing yeah. works. And I've seen the behavior over the, the years change back and forth where, where sometimes it, it seems to do the right thing and sometimes it doesn't. Mm. Um, all right. So that failed exactly as we expected. Yeah. So in start, um, actually you can just replace line 77 with listener dot emit game dot game event dot started. Uh, if I do this, won't we'll it break other tests? No, none of oh, our other tests we don't, are relying on right, it. Right. Because no other one. Realize that as I said it. Uh, so this is, well, that's easy. Game event started. Okay, that should work. Nice. Okay, I'm going to write the next test. All right. Um, and then after this test, I want to factor out our test helper. We've not been doing test helpers either mm -hmm. in your cautionary tale. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm like extra antsy. It's like, no, no, let's do it. Let's... Yeah. Um, so we're going to roll the dice. Oops, I'm in the wrong spot. This this is super easy. This makes me feel like we're on the right path. Um, because before we had to do all this stuff with dice roller and expected game and mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But now we don't care about any of that. Mm -hmm. Now we're just going to expect expect that game event dot dice rolled. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Over to you. All right. So let's go create that constant, and then now yeah, we can run it. It should fail because it should be empty. No pointer exception. Uh, why is it no pointer exception? Oh, because the load game failed. Because it's using the... Because it's using the, the delete me version. Right. Well, um, for now, what we can do is this. Oh no, we'd have to do all that crap. Um, well, yeah, let's just do it. Yeah, we hadn't used the with game before, so we'd always been configuring it through the game, really at a distance through the game snapshot through the database. Yeah, again, this, Okay, let's let's just factor. Let's let's ignore this one for now. How does that happen? Disabled? Uh, yes. Okay. Let's pull in the proper game service construction code. Because we shouldn't be going through create null in the game service tests anyway. Mm -hmm. We'll do a score category notifier, blah blah blah, dice roller, create null. And a game database dot create null. I'll track the events. That should still work. Can you run that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I don't think my refactorings are working. No, they're not. Can you factor that into a um, create game service method? Um, why are there multiple variables to return? Because it's return. We need the game service and the tracker. Oh, yeah. So we can't do that. Sure, we can. Um, we'll just make a record. Yeah. So we could. We, yeah. Yeah. We could do that. 
a record uh, actually wait game. wait 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 uh did they implement that yet so there was oh no i think in the latest latest version which isn't released yet of intellij it will uh actually ask you if you want to create basically a return parameter object and do oh, that work cool. for you which is cool that'd be nice um but doesn't do that yet i don't know what the syntax is for creating records but oh okay uh, it's actually way easier than that or actually it's pretty much that just so there uh so now um Wait, I have an idea. You can do extract method if you do this. Uh, just don't put. Yeah, I was just about to do that. <laughs> What'd you say? I was just about to do that. OK, sorry. It rained on your parade. <laughs> That's right. And then we should be able to say output dot yeah. and output dot. Yeah. Output tracker. Output dot tracker dot output. That's a good one. <laughs> so if I create. Great game service. Can we call this something other than test output? Yeah, I don't like test output either. Um, I don't love that either, but I'll take it. <laughs> at least, it, it, at least, uh, uh, it's more more descriptive if not better uh oh fixture is not bad as we just suggests yeah i don't know um okay let's move this down to the bottom yeah, I still don't love those names, but I will. I will open topic names. No, let's. Okay. Uh, I like fixture. Let's call it um, game service. Let's call it fixture, fixture, and create fixture. And the variable name too. Okay. All right. Now this okay. one. Okay. So that can be re enabled. Yep. And then we could just go. Nice. All right. So now we'd like it to just be empty. Yeah, we're expecting it to be empty yeah. and fail. And for we got the, yeah. All right. Perfect. Let's take a break. I was just about to say that. All right. <laughs> we're on the same wavelength. Yeah, now. yeah, yeah. All right. See you in a few. Okay, we're back. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so the test was failing as expected. Yeah, uh, this this is really starting to feel like we're on the right track because yeah. I'm thinking about how it's gonna what it's gonna be like to use to write view controller test. Mm -hmm. This is definitely an improvement. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, can I write the next test? Uh, would you like me to have it pass first? Oh, um, sure. I mean, if you have, if you, if mean, you must. While I'm here. Yeah, uh, listener, that's. And this is this world. Okay, let's get the pass. All right. <clears throat> yeah, what I love is what is about to happen with this next one. Because I think I'm going to be able to take this 
I take this whole mess, I mean, look at that, and just, except after we are what we're doing, <laughs> we are <laughs> uh, re-rolling. Is that correct? Like, my ID is so messed up at this point. I uh, it's just re-roll. Um, uh, re uppercase for the for that R, which I know it might be weird, um, but it does take the kept dice, which we okay. don't really care about, so it could be empty. We do we care about it? We do care about it. Okay, this is where we're in a little bit of trouble because in view controller test, um, we are actually calculating the kept dice. Mm. Right. So we do care. Yeah. So this is where just doing a simple enum doesn't doesn't work for us. Well, enums are just classes we could throw in a, a field. The other ones, it's always empty, and this one has the information. Yeah, let's do that. So let's... So, that undo that oh yeah actually let me go this way yeah i'm i'm really not a fan of um of code together this causes so much trouble so much trouble might have to experiment with some some other things. Um, one thing I want to I, I point out, and that's why I sort of went back to here, uh, mm -hmm. is is something I was I was tweeting about in my stream of tweets around around TDD and and sort of like recognizing that this is probably a lot. Like that, that this is this is like it's because it's very easy to become sort of inured to and 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 just like. This is just the way it is, and mm -hmm. and not realizing that this is kind of a smell, yeah. Um, and that you know we wrote that right, and then we went on to write more and more, and <clears throat> and it's very easy, even for for experienced people, uh, at least for me, uh, to to not pay attention and say what's going on here that. Or, or sometimes it's just, you know, there's a design issue here. I don't know what the solution is, but that first it, point of recognizing that there's, there's a problem, I think is, is something that, uh, is, is that skill that you only learn through just trial and error, which is practice. It's, it's so true. I mean, people get used to, and I say people, I include myself in this, you know, you're trying to get some work done. You, you are basically following a pattern that's already been set down. And that pattern includes Set up this thing, set up this thing, set up this thing, set up this thing, do this, do this. And then before you know it, you've got this immense amount of setup code and you write your test and then you're like, okay, now I can do the work. Right. And then, then you do the next one and you right. do it again right. and again and right. again. And you end up with this giant mess um, where really you need to just take that break and slow down. Yeah. Um, and I think the reason we didn't do that last time was because we were actually in overtime right. doing this. Yeah. So we were just trying to get it out there. So I'm glad we are taking some time today yeah. in between rants um, to <laughs> to actually improve this. And But that's a very realistic thing. It's like, I got to ship this, right? I got to yeah. schedule. I got to keep this. And I think it's... I'm pretty sure it's a killer. Yeah. And and I think it's I think it's okay like to say, I am recognizing this is a problem, but I got to ship it anyway. Yeah. And mm -hmm. and hopefully I will we'll come back to this. Um but you know, sort of seeing it and just saying that's just the way it is, I think, is where uh, people lose out on a lot of of ability to improve things. Yeah. So, Ouija, I do not agree with that. I, I agree with a lot of things JB says, but I don't agree with that one. Uh, I hadn't heard it before, but I don't. I don't like to dos or smell comments or the similar because there's this psychological thing that happens that saying you're going to do something in your brain is as good as having done it it sort of it it lets it gives you permission to stop taking responsibility for it and so um i my approach is the yoda approach it's do or do not but there is no to do um 
You know, it's, yeah. you look at the code, you see a problem, you either have time to fix it in that moment or you don't. You either think it's bad enough to fix in that moment relative to the amount of time you have or you don't. And then you move on. And then next time you see something, again, you do that. And if you never have time to fix things, then there is a systemic problem. Um, but don't put smell on it because it's obvious that there's a smell. <laughs> like these yeah. these things aren't subtle. Yeah, this is um, not subtle. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and if it is really subtle, well, is it really a smell? Yeah, I I I know that that to dos are very popular and 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 all all. Uh, for me, it's 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 one of sort of. In fact, like IntelliJ has this little to do thing window about down here that will show you all the thing, to dos, and that just makes me just anxious. Fill up with math. That yeah, just fills up just and it, total math. And it, and it just means now it's it's literally my big to do list. And it, mm -hmm. is that really important? You know, I, and I think I'm I'm very much in agreement. It's like if it really is important, you you'll do it. If if not, you will come to a point where now seventy tests fail, and now you've got to do the work. And now you've learned. A and you've learned. Hopefully, Next time, maybe. Do it. <laughs> um, or yeah. you just recognize that hey, this is the the third time we've done that. As a team, can we discuss ways not to do that anymore? Yeah. Um, yeah. I I really I mean coming back to that. I believe in building clean. Like, if I've got warnings turned on, then there are no warnings. Yeah. If if guy if got if I've got a build, it's got no messages when it's working. Right. It just you know it might say building this, and then it says success. Yeah. Um, I want no noise so that when there is something, it's something that is actionable that I actually work on yeah. at that moment. Yeah. Um, and and a lot of, of and and sometimes like you may not have a better way like you may say this is ugly and i can sort of hide it behind a, a, a method a helper method but yeah. you, you won't always be have, have the good solution and that's okay and like, that's and that's and exactly and, that, and that's okay yeah. yeah and and you won't have a solution today and you won't have a solution tomorrow next week you'll have an idea it might be a half-baked idea like the ones i was sharing about <laughs> game service and then the month after that, you'll have a better idea. Mm -hmm. And eventually the idea will be like, yeah, that works. And then you do it. Yeah. Um, but my, I find that with design, I spend a lot of showers because that's where my best thinking happens. Yeah. Um, I, I spend a lot of showers before the design sort of crystallizes. Yeah. And one of the things I noticed doing my uh, Let's, Let's Code JavaScript stream uh, or series back in the day, I was doing basically 30 minutes of uh, coding a week. Well, it was actually more like two hours, but it con condensed down to about 15 minutes. An hour turned into about 15 minutes of, of recording. Um, and having all that extra time to think about design was amazing. Mm -hmm. Like I'm the, the des end design was much better than I would do in the real world yeah. because I had so much time in the shower to think right. about it right. every day. Right. Um, so yeah, just it takes it takes time to figure out good design and just give yourself permission to do that. I guess is what I'm saying. Yeah, and sometimes you can't figure out the good design until there's now another request of some feature that finally pushes it into oh now now I see an abstraction that just wasn't there before, um, yeah. and now it's like now it's super obvious. Yeah. So speaking of good design, um, we do need a re-roll event, and I think I would like to do it with polymorphism. Um, because it's only the reroll event that needs the kept dice. Okay. And I know that uh, I mean, one. I actually really like the way enums are done in Java. I think refactoring between an enum and a class is, or like creating a subclass of the enum that is for rerolls is fairly easy, isn't it? Uh, I don't know. I, I don't. I can't remember the last time I, I did a subclass of an enum. I can't I remember if I've I ever done that. I, I just remember when I first read about them way, way back in the day when they were introduced, because they weren't part of Java originally. Um, yeah, they were they basically syntactic classes. sugar for classes, for instances, for singleton instances of classes. Yeah. Um, so we want... What do we want? Well, you think about it. I'm going to do a little Googling. Um, well, I'm trying to figure out what what do we want from from the what assertion do we want to make? We want to assert that the event 
that the tracker output gives us. Um, We're going to want to assert that it gives us a reroll event with a particular set of kept dice. So. So we would cast it to So I'm just doing a little googling and it turns out that enums are final. So Yeah, you can't that's 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 what I was suspecting cuz they're meant to be Can they take parameters like Yeah, so so as I said like what we could what we could totally do is um create create a, a method on I mean an enum still can have methods on it and so it can hold information. Uh, mm -hmm. The problem is that information is now shared across all of it. It is the has to be constant, right? Because these are uh, so we'd have to take we'd have to change move away from an enum into into regular classes. So we couldn't do this. No. Okay. No, you can do this. And then have that's a constructor, good. but that doesn't help us because we need this to be variable, uh, and you can't yeah. have you can't have variables. You you can put constants in, but you can't you because it's constant. It's it's a final. It's a singleton instance that only exists upon sort of create upon compile time. Right. Am I on the right track here? Yeah, yeah. And actually, Intel, I think IntelliJ would do some of this for us, but yeah. Yeah, there's probably a, a refactoring to convert yeah. a new. And we probably don't want them to be all caps like this either. No. But, uh, and this is, I think, it's going to be a, an extensible list. I don't remember how to do that. Uh, just say integer, uh, or actually say int dot dot dot. I'll let you do it. Yeah. Um, in fact, let me, let me delete this and see if you can do the automatic refactoring yeah. so that we, let's see, let's see if it'll actually hold on one second oh. with that in the buffer, just in case we want it back. What happens if we try to extract an interface? I don't think it'll let us. Uh, class, cover class. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, it's going to basically try to extract an interface because enums extend enum. There's a hmm. sort of the hidden enum class that it, that it gets it from. Um, so interestingly, there's no way to to sort of unroll this. Uh, I guess I guess people don't do it very often. So yeah, that's all right. Yeah, so easy enough to do. So actually, can you have classes inside of an interface? Uh, you. So that I could say gaming event dot. If it's a roll. static class, you probably could. I mean, we could try it. I just want to preserve our existing interface. Yeah. I think by definition, it becomes static, I guess, is what IntelliJ is saying. Okay. So implicitly, it's... Thank you. And uh, um, publics go away, because it's implicitly public. Yeah. And let's get rid of that constructor for now. Does that still work? So, um, we'd have to say new game event what, dot dice. What we'd, we? what we'd, for, for, well, it depends on what we want to do. So, if we wanted something like game event dot dice rolled and there, we don't need extra instances, then we'd want a, basically a, a public static final instance of, uh, of this class. 
No, I think we want to say new game event. Dark okay. Ice World. Then, yeah, then, 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 uh, then these nests, you should probably, um, let's go f fix this. So this is basically new. It's weird to implement. To, I, I don't know. Syntactically, that seems to work. It's just very, very weird. Um, just having the classes inside of the interface that they implement. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't see that done anymore. There's some interesting stuff you could do about sealed classes, but I don't think that applies here. Um, but anyway, if you do, so let's let's just do this. Let's just let's just get back to compiling. Yeah, this isn't going to pass though because these are not going to have. They don't. They're not records. They don't implement the. Um, They don't implement equals. Uh, right. These will fail because these are two different instances, which is where. Um, uh, All right. Well, run the test. Let's see what. Let's see if they yeah, fail the way we think. Yeah. So, can we make them records? I was just about. To, I think we can. I feel like this is an abomination against Java. Yeah, but... um, then it's like that. Yeah, speaking of being idiomatic, this this is <laughs> this is devil. This is just our C sharp. This is Java C sharp. I mean, Java that works. Um, Theoretically, it's Java. What it is is actually uh, crime against God. I mean, we. We could just say, all right, this is this is dice rolled. Yeah, I mean, and then this is it works. I'm okay with it. I just feel like it's extremely non idiomatic, and that makes me a little concerned. But it does work. So, uh, and then this would be a record. <laughs> Suiji says, "I think it's neither <laughs> for, for whether it's Java or C sharp." Yeah, that's exactly right, Suiji. This is Java's fault. It's it's they made Java made us do this. Yeah, it's like the 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 yeah yeah. Let's uh, so this is dice reroll. Thank you for spelling dice reroll that way. Having the second capital R and reroll was I, yeah. Was making I, I don't a know. Crazy. I, I, it's like is it two words? Is it hyphenated? But yeah, I don't know, whatever. Okay, so we're back to passing. Um, how do I feel about? I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't know. That I have a huge problem with this. It's it's a little bit of an abomination, but it's not too bad. Like it 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 does the job, and it does the job concisely. So I think I'm okay with it. I'm gonna write the next test. Okay, I, I'm just like uh, I don't know how much of an abomination it is. I, I, I have, I have is to go a fun look word at to say, so, <laughs> so <laughs> okay. I might be overstating it. I, I'd have to think about what does this take? Game service dot reroll takes just a list of kept dice. Okay, so that's going to be a list of two, three. Did I do that right? Um, I'm going to hand it back to you. Yeah. That's, that's what I'm complaining about. Oh, it's just reroll. That's why. Uh, uh, implements, in this case, startup just means that it shares the interface so that they're all game events, which means that um, our output tracker, which requires a game event, can work with all three of them. It should be int instead of integer over on the right, Ted. I don't think that matters. Um... Uh, Rerolled on line 49, Suiji says on the left. Oh, that's why. I'm like, why? That has three arguments. No, that was me. Lowercase r. Okay, we got to be consistent about that. Okay. 
Does it work? Well, it's uh, it's just IntelliJ's lying to me. Oh, it it's, says it's, that it's gray that it. it's not using it, but it actually is being used, and that's been a long-standing bug. Uh, all right, so this should fail. Um, and it fails for the right reason. Implement it. I'm surprised that two string isn't. Oh, that. Huh. I would have expected a better two string from the record, but maybe not. Okay. Again, what happens if you put int instead of integer? Um. Or is that just bad syntax? I mean, you can. It ends up being an, an, uh, uh, a raw int array. Um. Oh, it didn't help. But uh. But it's still not, but it's actually still an array object and it doesn't sort of unroll it because it doesn't know how to. Yeah, we kind of want that to be, can we implement a two string on the app? Yeah, so that's what I was going to basically do. Um, so this, well, that's that and then we'll, oops, string. Uh, these are uh, startup, these aren't functions, these are actually a type of class called a record. Yeah, so records are compact classes, basically. Uh, so you don't need to specify the constructor directly. You put it here, and it generates methods for you. Yeah, that's much better. Much better. OK. Uh, can roll that up. All right, so now. Uh, now it fails the right way, so let's go back to here. Uh, let's roll a reroll. Uh, so um, this will have to be. Why split. do we return a value here? Probably for this was a workaround. Yeah, there was some place and some test that we could probably now. Yeah, I bet we could get rid of the return with the with the event stuff. Maybe. Uh, no, we, I don't think we could. If, I don't think we can because we're testing. Yeah, I think that's I think that's another something to to solve later. I think we could do with if with perhaps with an, another event, but anyway, that's why it's returning it. So Let's introduce a local variable. What? What parameter? Oh. Oh. Uh, yeah. I don't know why I thought that conflicted. It's done that before. Uh, I mean, it's called it result. Uh, yeah. Okay. And then we'll do listener emit. And so here we want a new dice rerolled. Um, what's our contract? It's a list of. It's it's just a uh, variable list of integers. Um, but which ones? Oh, the ones that were rerolled. Um, the ones we kept. Actually, yes. So it's just okay. literally kept dice yeah. or whatever the appropriate convolution of that is. Which is that? Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, new integer zero. Yeah, because it just it just needs a template type uh, oh. that it can then copy over and do some fancy stuff behind the scenes. Um, That's interesting. Is it not doing a deep comparison inside the array, inside the record? Uh, it should just be doing an equals. Are they not equal? Um, 
Yeah, startup listeners sort of like subscriber. It's an event. It's an event type of thing. It's. I wonder if the default equal the default equals show should be comparing that array. Hmm. Let me do this. So, what does the class look like? Oh, it's using an object dot equals on the dice, uh, which may not work. Because it does a hash at the array. That's weird. I don't know why that that's not working. Um, if we gave it a list, would it work better? I don't know. Well, let's do this. Let's uh, let's go ahead and just implement our own equals. <sighs> That's interesting. Because that's actually what we want. Yeah, yeah. So, so IntelliJ. Uh, so uh, I guess the def I'd have to go look at what the default equals is for record. But that's what it treats them as the objects. So they are actually two different objects. That there are two different arrays. We actually want to test the contents of the arrays. So yeah, that's actually what we want. Wow. Uh, we may as well just convert this to a class. Maybe. All right. I'll leave it. I'll stop playing. Okay. All right. So that's that's what we want. Okay, and that's passing now. And that's passing now. Yeah. Okay. Next. So get rid of this. And once again, next I'll, I'll repeat. Got... I'll repeat that I hate arrays. <laughs> they, <laughs> they can be used internally by the JDK, but but man. But the this format. I mean, would you rather just do list of on this? Um, no, I'm willing to write, I'm willing to have the, the, the equals explicitly specified to make it a little bit nicer. Mm -hmm. uh, I just string in the fair. No, no, no. Yeah, no. <laughs> Arrays.equal is fine. It's just that we had to write it as opposed to the default record. Mm -hmm. Okay. So assign current hand to score category saves the game. Um, so actually, do we want a event for that? So we've got assign current hand to score category. Yeah, that's another that's another thing that we want an event for, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I think so. Yeah. Okay. So we are gonna do something. That, glad we finally got that fixture in. Mm -hmm. It was easy too. We, yeah. we should have been doing that all along. Yeah. Okay. So we've got a assign um, assign current hand to yeah assign current hand to and it takes a score category and score category is in the enum right You're correct yes. Category assigned or score category assigned? I think category assigned is sufficient. I mean, even assigned might be sufficient because of the parameter. But category assigned um, is fine. Yeah. I think I like category assigned a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm good with that. All right. So we want create inner, inner record. record. Yeah. And so let's go category. Um, yeah, that was impressively intelligence. Is that all we need? Uh, the equals method should work. Should work. And if it doesn't, uh, we'll find out soon enough. Yeah, and the two string that should be okay. All right. So 
this will fail because it's empty. Uh, yeah, that looks yep. fine. That came out great. Yeah. All right, and now, yeah, sort of builder. I don't know. It's it's you know, there's there's naming this kind of thing where it's like, how much redundancy do you want across? Especially when the parameter is an enum. Um, I'm fine for the method to be shorter because we, first of all, the context tells us, and I think the parameter tells us a lot as well. Um, all right, so we said this. Uh, I'm, I'm typing it in. All right. That should be it, right? All uh, right, it should be. There it is. Okay, and then we're done. Let's check that in. Look at that. Look at that beauty. That's much better. Yeah. I would probably get rid of the white space at this point, but that's me. I like vertically compressed code so I can see more at, the time, at a time. By yeah. which I mean like line 51 and 53, yeah, 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 yeah. for yeah. example. Uh, yeah, I like the white space. I'm going to keep it. Yeah, go ahead. All right. Uh, so... Oh, wait, should we get rid of, what about oh, yeah, delete yeah. me listener? Yeah, that, it's in the name. <laughs> uh, so where are we still emitting it? Oh, we're emitting it here. Um, right. Which we don't care about anymore. Yeah, we should be able to get rid of that and it doesn't matter. Yeah. And then we can get rid of that. Pause. Yep, and this is gone. Get rid of line 67 too, please. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, cool. All right. Um, yeah. Event tracker. Yep. Game event tracker. I like it. All right. We got about 15 minutes left, and we should now be able to make some changes to view controller test. Um, you with me? Yes. Yes, I see the red so box. So we should be able to say game service dot create no null. Mm -hmm. Actually, let me keep this around just in case. And then this is going to be the game tracker game event. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's output tracker. Yep. Events. And then we can say this. So that's all going to go into our helper, which we will mm -hmm. do right away this time. Right. And then we should be able to That should be it. What did I do? What did I do wrong there? No, that's all good. Let's see. Yep. I really like that. Yeah. Yeah. I like uh, that a lot. I like that much better. Let's uh, let's pull out that fixture. Uh, you'll need to make the I fixture know, record. I know. I'm just like. What'd you say? I was just like teasing IntelliJ. It's like, no, you should know how to do that. 
there. Okay. Uh, so let's create our... Mixture. And this has game service. Uh, not the game service, the view controller this time. Oh, right. We don't need the game service, right? View controller. And tracker, which is output tracker. Yeah. Uh, so he just says wishful keystroking. Yeah. I wish it, it will, will happen. Okay. Uh, so then we'll. Um, said view controller tracker. Voila. That's pretty sweet. Let me get rid of this. And uh, <clears throat> we'll grab this. Okay, wait for the next one. Yeah, I was just thinking um, we can move this method into the record. The create fixture? Mm -hmm. Sorry. I yeah, no, that would be, that would still be weird. Okay. No, just... we can't do that because it's a different, um, like when we do this on Yacht Controller, it'll be a Yacht yeah, Controller. Back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We could do it with some sort of weird ass reflection, but. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, there's, <laughs> no. Yeah, thank you. I mean, at that point, we, we we might might promote it to a full builder that has a bit more flexibility, but I don't know how worth it that is. The other thing, though, is it's production code, and although I'm okay with test code in production, that would be a bridge too far for me, mm -hmm. I think. Okay, so post to start game starts the game. Can we just say uh, starts game? Yeah. And gets current hand? Sure. OK, so actually, this one's a little different. Right, because this one's not tracking any command events. Yeah, so we'll, we'll come back to that one, I think. But I'm still going to say starts game here. Um, but can roll dice mm -hmm. is definitely it's just calling roll dice. That's all we care about. You okay with rolls dice? Sure. Okay. Um, all right, you make it to go. <laughs> My ID is still messed up. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure what happened there. I think you hit the button race condition, like before you fix the typo. Hmm. Um, that should have worked. So we've got the delete me impl load game problem again. That's okay. We can, we can solve that. We have the technology. Um, so we'll just say game service dot nulled responses dot with game new game. What's going on here? Not wanting to import that for some reason. There it goes. Right. It wasn't wanting to import it. Now it's imported. Uh -huh. 
Uh, try that. Uh, are we using with game? Mm, I don't, I think we wrote it. I don't know if we actually were using it. That is a good question. Because we defined it. Um, yeah, that actually should work. It should have taken the, the snapshot and created the game database with the, with the game database with that name, with that game. Scroll up to the dot create and all. I don't think it's in place yet. Uh, but yeah, yeah, it's not in place yet. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's all right. We can still, what's up? How do we? So create null gives us a new delete me impl. What if we just make create null create a database that's in a functioning state, like just give it a game? Okay. Can we do that? Um, sure. We can create a constructor that takes a snapshot. Oh, it's the snapshot. I mean, this is going to go away anyway, so yeah, we can do whatever the heck we want. Uh, wait, we got to instantiate the game and then call snapshot. Yeah. Yeah, we could do that. Yeah, let's try that. Okay. Um, let's just see if that breaks any of. Let's run every single test and see if that breaks anything. And if it doesn't, I agree. I mean, normally I wouldn't hack away like this, but yeah. but since we're getting rid of this anyway. Uh, oh, I may not have the database up and running. Well, that, that is super unhappy. This it's is... unhappy about you not having something running, right? Yes, it's unhappy about, about Docker's not running. Oh. Um, yeah. Because I rebooted before the stream and I forgot to start Docker. That's right. Can you can you stop the test? Yeah, I'm going to stop the tests. I don't think you need to start, start Docker. I think you can just like not run the yeah, IO test. I'm just going to run the IO free ones. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Yeah. So back in view controller test. Um, yeah, we should be able to get rid of this now. Say again. We should be able to get rid of this. Right. Go ahead. Yep. Good. Good, good, good. Okay. So, meanwhile, back at the ranch, we should be able to go from here to get scored categories, is again the other thing. But can assign current hand to category. Assign. It's just this. What's going on here? Is it doing the translation from the... Mm -hmm. Oh, that's cool. So this is actually going to be a more meaningful test in that we are going to assert that we got Category assigned, score category dot sixes. Yep. I like that. Okay. Yeah. That should work. Ooh, that didn't work. Ah. So here, uh, require hand. Dot, so we need a. So it was trying to assign the hand, 
Um, but the game said no because um, because the round is completed. Hmm. And eventually we'll be able to say with game, but we can't do that yet because we don't have a, because it's the wrong database. Right. But what we can do. I mean, we could start this one in the, in our delete me. I don't know if that's a good idea though. No, I don't think that's what we want. I mean, we could just start game after we create the fixture. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Is in actually in create fixture, we should start the game. Yeah, why weren't we doing that? Uh, so Ouija says, I think we want to roll. Yeah, we can't assign because it's not that the game hasn't been started, it's that it hasn't been, there's nothing has been rolled. So we can't assign right right we can't assign the role to a category if nothing has been rolled right um so in this case what i kind of want to do is say this Or what is it? Dice? Yeah, it's dice rolled and then takes parameter of what the dice that were rolled were. What kind of parameter is that? Uh, it's a hand of dice. So hand of dice. Yeah, let's show that. And then. And then create fixture doesn't currently take a game. Right. The other option would be to have the fixture return a service. Um, and then tell the service to roll some dice. That might be a bit easier. It's easier. Is it the right thing to do in this case? So this is yeah, this is again sort of that situation of of like how do you prepare how do you do your setup? How do you prepare mm -hmm. the thing to to do you want do you want to do it the way sort of it normally happens? Do you want to manufacture a game in that precise state? Uh and this is where the snapshot would help. Um or do you so do you drive it? Do you drive the game directly? Do you drive it indirectly for the service yeah. or do you create a snapshot? Those are our sort if, of three options. If we're driving the game directly, we're kind of breaking the illusion that we're interfacing with game service. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're breaking that encapsulation yeah, uh, and that bugs me a little bit, mm -hmm. but it bugs me for the same reason game service bugs me in that, I, you know, it, it, that's still bothering me. I know I don't have a better solution, but it's still bothering me. Um, I think we should have the fame, the fixture return the game service. It's going to be totally ugly, but can I, can I go ahead? Well, if you just, I mean, if we add it to the fixture record, then it's just access the way, same way we're doing the view controller and the tracker. Yes, but wait, wait until you see. Oh. I think there's a piece of this you're not anticipating. Okay. Um, game service. So we'll do that. Game service. That's not the part that's ugly. Oh, okay. Um, so we're going to have fixture.game service dot roll dice. And then. Okay, this is going to fail tests. Try that. Um, Thank you. It's not that ugly. It's probably better than doing it with the game. Yeah. Right. And then we've got to say fixture.tracker.clear. Right. That's the ugliness I was talking right. about. And it's okay. not that ugly. Uh, yeah, I don't think it's that bad. No, it's not I that mean, bad. if if we cared, we'd create two different fixture methods that created one that created a different state or something like that. Yeah, or something. I okay, think I think I'd have to, I, I, yeah, I think I'd have to see more of this kind of thing before I before maybe refactor it to multiple create fixture methods. 
Yep, that passes. Yeah, it just comes back to we want to. It, it's it's again the exact same problem. We're having to manipulate state, and right. that's uh, that's pointing to something funky. The fact that this is Java. <laughs> 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 no, I don't think it's a Java problem. I think it's a design issue. I think it's a state management thing. Um, but uh, so I think we're on a roll. Next time we'll just continue mm -hmm. editing view controller, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so final thoughts. Well, I really like this uh, tracking the commands, um, mm -hmm. and I have no problem with this interface with with class with records in it i i don't know this this totally totally is fine um it's just and, the interface contains the thing that implements the interface it's it's a little bit weird I, it doesn't really bother yeah, me either I, I but it's, it's, it's funky it it's maybe it's just so far out of the norm that i don't do this that it that it's like oh okay yeah. you know kind of thing um mm -hmm. uh and what i what i also like is is like it's it's polymorphic but I was actually worried, are we going to have to do casting? And and no, of course not, because the, the equals basically is polymorphic. And so, so right. that just works out really nicely. And, yeah. um, and the fixture is, 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 you know, just makes this and I, and, and it, it really is testing what we want to test, which I yeah, think it's, is, it's is the very main targeted thing. Yeah. on the thing we want to test. Yeah. Yeah. This has been so much more pleasant to work with than pretty much everything we've been doing up until now, it, um, that it really feels to me like it's on the right track. Yeah. But I've got a devil's advocate question for you, which is that how is this any better than just using a spy? Well, that that's my that was my thought exactly because like this is this is very spy like. Um, it's very spy like. Yeah. It feels like a spy. It's not a spy. It's, it's not a spy. An implementation. Yeah. Um, but is so, it better? Uh, if nothing else, it runs faster. If, so, because we're not using because we're not using reflect we're not using Makita, which which has startup yeah. time, um, but we're not coupled to a specific method being called. We are yeah. coupled to an event occurring, however that event happens, wherever that event happens. Maybe the and game coincidentally, it's the result of a specific method right, being called. Right, but but it could be that the game actually it actually comes from game and it's propagated by game service, which actually maybe makes sense. Um, yeah, so so it's 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 more loosely coupled than than a spy would be, um, and, and just the test output's a little easier to read too. Well, the, at just managing the test. I mean, have you tried capturing arguments from spies and comparing the argument? Oh, it's awful! Oh, it's such a oh, such it's a terrible! Oh God! It's like how does anybody put up with that? Um, and there's improvements to a search aid to handle that, but that's to me just papering over the problem. Um, but yeah, it's it it very much is a spy. It's just a different way of doing it. It's I would say. I would say it's not a spy, but that's only because people mean a specific thing. By yeah, spies. yeah, we got the language it's problem. It's very much doing what a spy is doing, right? But it's doing it in a behavioral way, rather than rather than a um, rather than an interaction way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. It's not really. It's not checking any interactions between anything. It is no. saying we expect somebody to have produced this event somewhere and put it into the tracker somewhere somehow somewhere somehow at the right place mm -hmm. um yeah 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 I, I really like this okay yeah um all right so next time we will finish view controller we'll move on to yacht controller which i think actually will be i i haven't seen yacht controller tests recently but i think it will make them really pretty yeah because i feel like be these tests are super pretty yeah yeah um, and I particularly, my favorite one of these is actually, um, I think it might be the one we just wrote, despite the, despite the clear tracker, the, the, yeah, it's right having to clear the tracker, which is also interesting because you wouldn't do that with a spy because you spy, you would just say this method was called. You wouldn't care that any other methods had been called. Well, you might have to do some, like maybe the method gets called twice or something and you'd have to be right. careful about that because one yeah. was called during setup. And so then you actually would have to clear it. I actually have hmm. seen code yeah. that does that. So, so I don't think there's much, much difference there. But um, I'm, I'm hoping that we're going to see more things like this, where we're yeah. actually seeing real logic happening. There yeah. is some sort of weird category mapping here getting converted into an enum. Not weird, but I mean, there was some, there was some actual parsing logic going on. Yeah. 
And I think that this assertion, the way this worked was really nice. Yeah. No, the assertion is much more clear than, than again, it felt like what it was before was testing at a distance. Yeah. It was sort of uh, uh, comparing at a distance. Like, well, I don't know, magic will happen and I expect there to be six. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was like, okay, but that's just, that's just not right. I mean, this is this this is much much cleaner and much much more uh, uh, evident of what you're actually what you're actually checking. And it was not hard to implement. I mean, it took no. us a while to get there because we ranted a lot. But um, actually, and, doing the output tracking when we finally got to it yeah. was really straightforward. And it was really nice how how one by one it was we were able to replace the the save tracker, and then we just got mm -hmm. rid of the save tracker, and and everything was just fine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> cool. Yeah, Suiji's right. It's like whenever I see argument capture, I throw up a little bit and not not tasty at all. All right. Um, so thanks everyone for for hanging out with us. And uh, as as we mentioned before, um, we won't do a pairing stream next week, um, but I will I will stream uh, on some related stuff. Uh, and then uh, so stay tuned on on Twitter, Discords for for schedule stuff uh, in case anything else changes. But otherwise. Uh, we will see you next time. Yeah, uh, so that sh should be another pairing stream in two weeks. And final plug, uh, this is your last chance to sign up for my course, uh, jameshore.com slash s slash nullables dash training. So I hope to see you there. Let me put it in here. And uh, yep. with that, I think that's all I got. All right. Bye, folks. <laughs>